Welcome back, and thank you for sticking with us through that little bit of a delay. We are almost ready for games, though, as you've seen. All our players are sat down and pretty much ready to get into the server, so Clubhouse between SSG and Wolves is that first map in this best of three. Every game here, of course, being a best of three, let's not forget that as well, and that's where things will get underway. Here we go, though, Tim. Time for us to get stuck in. Gonna get tasty. Looking forward to getting things started here at SI 2024. Remember Space Station Gaming against Wolves. It's a game that we've not seen too often. Only one meeting between these two teams internationally. I hate to bring it up, SSG, but it was a 7-0 to Wolves. So, SSG, nice. I'm sure, going to be looking to uh, get a little bit of revenge, maybe. Send a message back in return. That was back in Copenhagen, though, on the what, 1st of May, I think it was. It was a long time ago. So in their mind, it is firmly in the back of their heads, and lots of things have changed since then. Entirely different meta we step into. No doubt an entirely different way of playing the map, so I'm keen to see how things evolve. First band coming out is going to be the Ying from SSG. It's going to be interesting to see how these operator bands shape up. Obviously, uh, you know, with Tiburau being available, is that going to impact on those well, now bands Maverick particularly? Bands. Maverick has yeah. been banned out, of course. Tiburau, um, you know, the recent change to Tiburau was that Maverick's torch would work uninterrupted um, against those canisters. So we'll see just exactly how that plays in. But Mira is going to be the first defensive ban. Interesting because that now guarantees us at least a majority of his army, Solis, Valkyrie, um, you know, so many of these powerful defenders left up. Fenrir was going to be my last one to pick up on. He is going to be taken away. Um, so that leaves us with our Banjing, Maverick, Mira, and Fenrir. Interesting bands overall. Now, for those who maybe hadn't seen, there were some recent nerfs of Tuberal where <laughs> Maverick's Blowtorch no longer has about a second delay until it goes through a wall. It went out as clean, goes through like a normal wall. That's not the main thing that's really hurt him, though. Air quotes hurt because he was already an absolute pain in the backside and still remains it for many teams. It's now more that there's a second and a half delay when a wall is electrified Attackers once the freezing effect wears bombs. off when the electric act then reacts. So there is still now more time for the attackers to work with. You can't just chuck it with that, you know, half a second left on a thermite charge, for example. You need to be really proactive if you are going to play the two brow. And I spoke to a couple of teams over the last few days and said, you know, what are you thinking of two brows? He's still a permaban. And they said, honestly, not really. Things like Solus are still a headache. Things like Emery are a headache. Azami, although strong, isn't as big a headache maybe as those two are. I think really Solus is the one that many teams are really kind of like grinning and bearing at the moment. So with her being available, Ashen obviously going to jump onto it here in round one. Really valuable if they're playing that go-to, which it seems they are, Tim. The go-to coined SSG roam on this map. Many teams have taken it and adapted it over time. This isn't the pure form that we saw SSG running historically, for example but it's still going to see them playing out around the map and looking to slow walls down for as long as they can. Ashen just taking that hard line through the drone hole, hot and cold, peeking from the billiards window. SSG just looking to maybe bring a bit of aggression into proceedings here. Ashen opening up the barricade as well. They're not over committing to it. We saw hot and cold moving away from the window. Ashen's going to dip himself, get himself upstairs. And so it's just really sending that message to Wolves. Like, we're up in your face. We're here. We've fired a few bullets out of the map. Nothing is going to be easy for you. You're going to have to fight for every inch. And that's what we would expect from the SSG Rome, getting up there on top floor playing your life fighting through the verticals Mowgli taking some damage there but does manage to find the spray down onto Has the man playing it. stage can't quite get the finish onto hot and cold just yet though and he's getting paid oh taken down from above as well as Ashen gets him below really good bit of team play coming out there they're shooting from the hatch below and from above Everything going off on the ground floor, but at the same time, P4's got himself in and down goes the diffuser here. They're going to stick it, and there's still eight players and the server team. We've always known, how do you beat the SSG roam? You rush into sight and you put the diffuser down whilst everybody's around the map, and that is exactly what Wolves have done there. Fantastic play from them to spot and take that opportunity. Ashen has got himself back down. The kills start coming in, but it is not to the advantage of SSG as two go to Wolves. P4 Bibu picking up important numbers along the way Jay I know just looking to see if he can find his man but no walking into crossfires Wolves have got this locked down it's all up to Fultz there's a bit too much to do here with 10 seconds on the clock as well Wolves have played it patiently they've played it well and this should grant them the round win even if Fultz were to go through and get the last man there there's still nowhere near enough time and I love actually from both teams that we've seen really good bits of team play both with Wolves actually on the site itself in the post plant playing these crossfires but also for SSG, how fast they adapted to Hot and Cold getting into that engagement with Mowgli around stock. They had Ashen from above. They had someone inside of Blue shooting from below as well. Just three players really trying to 
punish Mowgli. And equally for Wolves, that was the bait they laid, though. They were saying, look, if you're going to focus three players on him, we're going to just smash into the site and get the diffuser down. A really good first round by Wolves, but some promising signs from SSG. Just got to be careful of those faster attacks. And this is something a few teams have mentioned is in the current meta with Subarau being what he is. Actually, the TDM meta isn't slowed down. It's kind of exacerbated and really pushed to the limits because you can't afford to play slow anymore when there are so many tools available to the defenders. So you are going to see, I think, Wolves playing a pretty rapid game here whenever they see a hole in the SSG defense. Yeah, 100%. I, I love that round from Wolves. Uh, you know, what a great start from them, recognising, as we've said, you know, for the longest time now, and it's still valid today. If you're going to play with three or four in and out around the map, up on the top floor, you are leaving yourself open um, and exposed to potentially teams just getting in now. Then what's Ashen going to do here? Got himself just out by the door there waiting. Um, don't, you know, if he's got impacts mm -hmm. in pocket, um, which he does, there's a potential to get outside of the map here quickly. He's just waiting for somebody to come and drone, potentially, just... Yeah. Park themselves by a wall and see if they can find anybody. And again, Hot and Cold getting aggressive on the outside as well. SSG certainly not backing off after round one. I like how they're forcing Wolves to have to fight for every single inch of the map. Yeah. You know, Ashen was looking for a run out. Hot and Cold had one out of Kitchen. He's got support on main stairs. He was looking out towards Chains. Just really trying to slow Wolves down. Again, because I think when you know you have so many tools as the defenders, at least normally, to slow things down, to lay it out. The more time you can waste, the more it's going to hurt the attackers when it comes round towards round end. And looking at the gadgetry on the side of the attackers, you've got the Grim, you've got the Decay Bee. The more of that they can burn in the early round, the less it's going to come flying into them when it comes round to the site hit itself. But I think you've seen it yourself too. They are still playing out in the map. They aren't playing that hyper-aggressive full floor or full three floor roam. It's a bit more condensed towards the site. You can see three players on site here. Ashen could be the real backstab factor, though I don't think they know that he's here, Tim. They've not a clue as he comes in and gets, <gasps> should get himself Ashen, no. a freebie, but no, he's going to miss out on the opportunity as Mowgli. Oh. Not only does he continue fighting, but he gets the kill. Probably not a bad outcome in that situation. Ashen just managing to let go of the impact nade in time, does manage to make it a direct trade, but the damage may well have been done. Four versus four, Wolves, one minute 30. Nitro going to pick up P4 as well, and this is much better from SSG this time. Not allowed Wolves straight into sight and forcing them to do that mid-floor work that they need to. Wolves are going to be kicking themselves, I imagine, too, because look at the operators they've lost. Hard breach has gone and hatches are not open. They're going to be stuck trying to force something here that's going to feel so messy and scrappy, and surely SSG at this point will be aware of that. They can just sit back and let Wolves come at them down these horrible bottlenecks, like through blue or down main stairs. Everything is with the American side here, and Wolves are going to be kicking themselves for not getting a sniff of action earlier in this round. Not a single drone was sent out towards Strip. Yeah, that's it. They're going to have to make sure that they're taking that from this round, um, you know, and just improving that drone economy, that drone efficiency, really, making sure that they're picking up on everybody in and around the map. Deadshot just trying to work from the bottom of main stairs, taking out a little bit of utility along the way, but not really making too much progress yet. 30 seconds, down. and Wolves are pushing down blue at the same time, so at least they've got this multi-angled push that we like to see on Church and Arsenal. They can't allow SSG to just line up in one direction. Bibu just trying to use those Grim canisters sending the bees to just try and force those players out of blue. But right now, Wolves, they're just not moving SSG. Hot and cold, he manages to find dead shot. Bibu with one from blue, but the trade is there for Jane, I know. And with five seconds left to go, it's all up to Shinka. How many times have we said that? But Fultz, he is going to pick up his final, man. And that brings me to another point for Wolves. You know, I say that about Shinka. How many clutches does he get? How many of those situations does he win? But you've got to remember the underlying point there is that he's in those situations. He's in those 1vxs to win them. And I feel like Wolves, that's something they need to be avoiding as much as they can. But SSG, great defence from them that time. Really in charge of the map. Ashen was unlucky, oh, really, man. not to get more at the beginning there. <laughs> A degree of unlucky and I think also a degree of just being a little bit, you know, the tournament's just getting started. You can't be missing shots like that. You've got a no. man literally planting a breaching charge on the ground. He's not moving and you still manage to whip and not get the kill. Uh, at the end of the day, Mowgli dies. That's the key thing. They get rid of the ace and then they also get the C4 on the Habana player. I mentioned it. It means hatches stay closed and SSG have so much less to worry about in the round. Knowing there are no drops coming in through Moto, there's no drop coming in through Kitchen. It was very fortunate those are the two operators they found out but still well played they've got away with it there and walls have not punished action being out inside a strip
Curious to see what happens next time we get back onto that site, but that'll be in a couple of rounds. Time that is now locked off. We've got to go through two different sites here for the defensive side. Going towards what has become the second most popular site here in gym and bedroom with Cash and CC. Definitely fading away from holding that top dog spot. We do have Tuguro on the board as well. Um, Hot and yes. Cold is going to be bringing along the newest operator. If you're not familiar with him, he's got some Zortor canisters, which when he throws against the service will freeze it off. But more importantly, it will stop any sort of electrical utility on there. So your Thermite charge, your Hibana charges, anything like that is going to get frozen out only for a period of time when canister melts away the charge will activate again but um, it can be a real delaying tactic so we'll keep an eye on hot and cold and see just how effective i don't think he's in position to deny this uh, breach onto the construction wall and nope that's the exothermic charge detonating so that is at least one successful breach without too much of a delay for wolves it's one thing that has always bothered me about Mowgli, at least for the last like probably nine months or so Prior to this, he would always be at the front of the team and they'd be working as a team and making a lot happen. But the number of times these days that he pushes ahead of his team and gets Keep caught out when everyone else wants to play slow. I mean, look at the lineup. Flores, four drones to go through. Thermite Thatcher, want to get walls open. Similar story for P4 before he gets his gun up and starts doing work. Yet he's gone in pretty aggressive there, been taken out by Ashen super early in the round. While well, everyone else is still outside the building doing things they need to get the round moving. And so it just feels like that little bit of sink here where Mowgli's still trying to play a very kind of solo operator. And it is going to cost them a competition like this. We see Fultz put down but not out. And Boris tries to get himself wow. out of the window to rescue Ooh. something from that situation. But it's Ashen who is going to be the saviour manager to find a couple of kills. Fultz is down but very possibly be picked up now and only losing Forrest in that whole situation but finding yourself in a four versus two really is not the end of the world for SSG although Fultz he's on a real tight time scale now and it looks like the pickup is coming just in the nick of time well good you saw the tuber out work there as well just keeping those Salmas pinned for a while an extra 20 seconds that gave them a bit of time to reposition turn their focus out towards this side of things I think that he missed the cane in mind it got just enough on there to get the bathroom wall opened up, which will force the players away. But again, for SSG, knowing that the two players are pushing in on this side, you've heard the EMP, you know the Selmers are coming on through, you know what's going on. You can just sit and watch and wait, and that's exactly what they'll do. Shinka, once again in a 1v3, but we know how this ends, Tim. Almost certainly at this point, SSG are looking pretty sharp, um, and they've got the crossfires established, one in construction, one in logistics. Uh, so it's going to be very difficult for Shinka to be able to, to comfortably move around site here. There's no real opportunity for him to put the diffuser down. He's got to start trying to find himself some kills. 15 seconds left to go, and SSG are playing this smart. They're not overcommitting. They're not looking for the gunfights. They're not chasing the kill. They're going to do exactly what they need to, which is force Shinka into that position to have to put the diffuser down. Ashen, it is to pick it up, and SSG 2-1 after a Another solid defense. Didn't take him too long to get loud, did it? <laughs> Already finding yourself a big round there. And this is that classic thing where in one round, you're whiffing what could be the easiest kill in the world. The next, you're securing a 3K for your team with a wonderful long shot as well from that CC window all the way out across South Balcony. Just really great way to recover what was a bit of a messy jump out originally coming out from Forrest. He got a down here and then lost his life immediately. And then Ashen comes across and got two kills immediately off the back of it. Much better recovery. Really got the round going for the team. And again, it's two cases where, you know, although in that previous round it wasn't the cleanest from Ashen, there's two rounds there where his flanks or his plays have had a massive impact. He has been very pivotal to the two round wins from SSG so far. Shows Maybe. in the kill feed as well, five and two. Certainly does. Going to be moving on to the third choice site then. It's going to be CCTV and Cash. As you said, uh, falling in popularity over the last year or two for sure. Uh, attacking wise, they're going to be looking to get control of Garage Catwalk and the sort of half roof that you see to the top right of your screen there. They want to get that breach wall open into uh, CCTV and then it gives the opportunity to move in and plant that diffuser quite safely as long as you've got some control of underneath as well. Um, but we'll see what SSG can bring to the table this time to be able to prevent that all from happening. They've got J90 with the Tuberau again, so going to be able to slow down that breach potentially. Um, so we'll see how impactful that is. Usually we'd ex expect to see that breach opened up within the first 30 seconds to a minute. So that's going to be one way that we can gauge, uh, you know, just how impactful that operator is. You look back at the historical bands on this map for SSG as well. Normally it's Kai, Bandit, and Valkyrie. They're go-to four bands. Here, obviously, haven't left the former two open. The Electro Bros, as we call them, opened up. 
is because you can pair it with the two brow. Admittedly nerfed, again, given that 1.5 second delay after the freeze effect wears off now before a bandit kicks in. It's still a nice synergy that you can have as long as the two brow is near a wall and ready to pop it as soon as you hear the exothermic going off, for example. But this round, what I'm most excited about, Tim, is seeing Shinka getting across onto playing that blitz. Now, you've got people on the ramp, for example, a couple of changes here as to who's playing what in this round. Ramp feels like a really odd choice for this site, so I'm really curious to see what the go-to use case is. Instead of pushing for uh, Garage and Breach side, going to be looking instead to get established inside of construction. Looks like Bibu's just going to be positioning to open up construction wall as well, possibly support this push. But Mowgli taking a lot of damage there, needs to be careful. And Bibu actually drops himself away from that wall. I'm not sure if he's positioned an exothermic or not. No, he's got two left in pocket. So it just looks like Wolves are having a little bit of a rethink here and maybe mm. shaping up back out towards that normal Breach inside. I swear if he peeks at some dice again. I'll Honestly, you've got two globals in back pocket. We said last round that you pull it full in too far ahead of the team. Everyone else is still doing setup work, and you're peeking an angle where you've already been shot once. You know, I hate to say it, but Mowgli is costing his team so much in these early and mid rounds. He does actually stick it instead of moving round. He's going to open up logistics, just giving again that access into construction. Don't need to worry about the external wall too much now. Uh, they do have the presence that they need. Really, Bibu wants to get across to the other side um, and just open up that reinforced wall uh, that's near to the window. It's then going to give a lot of angles for P4 from the position he's in. Um, although he's actually dropped to work and try and find a, a pass through underneath now. Deadshot's taken out. This was the concern. It's so easy to hold down the lines from underneath. Um, P4 is going to be looking to try and reverse that vertical gameplay, but it's not going to work for him. And SSG, 30 seconds left to go. There's the comfortable here in a five versus three. Walls are just giving them 1vx after 1vx, it feels like. There's no real trade play coming off the back of it. And your win condition in the Blitz has got no support, no globals to work off of. And they're being absolutely slammed for it. It, it took four rounds, Tim, but I'm officially bothered. I am bothered. That was <laughs> I can, one of I can the, hear it in your voice, Des. That was one of the... <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. Like Already, we're four rounds in, I don't know what to say. From Walls again, I mentioned it from Mowgli at the start. You're pushing in as a one-man band when you've got... A Thermite working his way in through Logi to get the double wall opened up. You've got the Thatcher watching on the south side to make sure there's no attempted tricks coming in. And Mowgli is re-peaking the same angle where he's already been shot once. I don't know if it's an ego thing or just believing that he's better and he can win those ones, which on his day, completely agree. But the match so far has not shown that. You're taking out two EE1Ds and losing them, which would be absolutely crucial for the Blitz execute. And Shinka's there like, well, guys, we're now 5v3. I've got no support on the push-in. What do you want me to do? And he runs into the room, gets C4, gets shot from two angles. It's just an absolute mess. And again, you expect so much more from Wolves. You know, the times they've been at big event sides at this, and they should be able to get better and improve. We're just not seeing that synergy. It's almost like half the team wants to play slow, half wants to play fast. And I'll say right now, half is more like one player. Mowgli really wants to go fast. And it's just not what the same page the rest of the team are all reading from. That's got to change. Certainly does. Uh, you know, team cohesion and, and um, sort of consistency have obviously been the problems that we've seen for Wolves. Um, and as you said, as right now, it doesn't seem like those problems have sort of gone anywhere um, or even look to be going anywhere very quickly. We will see as this one continues. But right now, SSG certainly in the driving seat. And you can see the confidence oh, building imagine. with them. They've been up at the barricades, up at the windows a lot of the time. But you can just see the appetite is there for them to take the fight to Wolves at the beginning of every round. SSG just really starting to sort of stretch the legs a little bit now and Bibu going to be sending the drones in spotting those rotations that should tell him that there's a potential for presence up on the top floor but not seeing anybody at the mm. minute and it's looking pretty clear Wolves they need to get in there start clearing across use that information that they've got and then secure that map control I don't forget how stung they were previously I did say I was excited to see what happened when we got back down onto the site how it would be played how the teams would approach it Wolves the answer is full caution they are checking everything not forgetting, Ashen was a player around Strip who caused a lot of trouble for them last time. Mowgli on the IQ, of course, now with the Naze. Not forgetting about that as well. Able to get into a good spot, and you probably will see a pick rate being a little bit higher at this SI than maybe what you're used to historically as a result. But the big thing really for me, again, for Mowgli, it doesn't matter what operator you're playing on. If you're not in sync with the rest of your team, it is going to cost you. And I love the use of the drone block, by the way. Yeah, that's it. Getting a drone down to the bottom of main stairs can just feed a lot of information around boxes, whether anybody's moved across the dirt, over underneath kitchen hatch, for example. You can really watch that sort of thoroughfare between blue and sight and see what's going on. So 
Yeah, definitely uh, well positioned there and just going to prevent that information. But it also prevents you knowing if anybody's going to peek out of church potentially. Oh. Now then, Forrest nearly overextends. He's going to continue taking the fight. He's going nowhere. What? He's got the backup. He's what? got the kills. It's going to be a double for Forrest. J9 finds two as well. And in the blink of an eye, there's Wolves get decimated. Decimated is the best way to put it, Tim. Absolutely destroyed on the push towards blue there. Everything falling apart for them. I'm pretty sure Mowgli had like a attempted backstab air quotes coming down main stairs as well. But three players funnel in and get absolutely deleted. SSG barely looking challenged so far. V4 left in a 1v5 and off the back of a flawless round in the prior. This one's looking to go the same way. Walls, let's not forget Tim, chose to start on the attack. That's looking like a bad idea for morale. Great smoke play there from Fultz as well. Just burning another 15, 20 seconds off the clock as P4 has to push from him. There's no choice whatsoever. Hot and cold finishes off a flawless round. P4 really just out of options. You know, yeah, yep. you can go somewhere else, but it's 5v1. SSG are going to recognize where you've moved to very, very quickly. You're limited on time. You just kind of got to go in and hope for the best at that point. Wolves have called that tactical timeout. No surprise to see them press that button, Des, and say... We need a break here because SSG, they're starting to run all over them. That's four rounds in a row. What I find interesting is, you know, looking at Leland here, she said very little or is still saying very little. Now she's speaking covered away, doesn't want anyone to see or literally what's being said. But for the first 20 seconds or so, just let the players talk. And I imagine maybe that was a little bit of frustration, maybe as an opportunity to get vented between the teammates. Because again, right now, they look completely out of sync. Everyone's trying to do their own thing outside of round one where we saw a really good execute into Arsenal as a team. That was great. Although the idea of the pushing towards blue was good, we saw that completely crumble at the hands of a shotgun there a second ago as well. SSG just look unchallenged is the, way, the only way I can really describe it. I mean, normally in that situation, Forrest, he gets peeked from the door and he manages to dip away from that first fight. And I sort of think, right, Forrest got away with one. He's yeah. going to get himself back down blue and just sort of play his life. But it just shows the confidence that SSG are playing with. That he says, no, no, I'm going to 180, pull the shotty out, and I'm going back in for more. Yeah. And he knows that these kills there to be found. But also the fact that he wasn't punished for that. You know, Forrest can't get away with they his life there. They wanted to. The problem is, Jane, I, to be fair, if any, if any coach heard a player go, guys, I've got a strap. I want to put two players on blue. <laughs> We're going to play for our lives and hold off against a full team assault in blue. Yep. And the coach will turn around and very fairly say, you will not be able to retreat down blue. You will lose your lives. What the hell are you thinking? But because they had ADS's stat there, because they had Forrest with the shotgun up close and Jane I know down blue, watching the window so he couldn't get easily pushed, the two of them get two kills each. And it's just a beautiful 2v4 play. Absolutely love seeing it. And I think, honestly, there's going to be questions again for Wolves now, even after that attack timeout, can they fix things going into this last attacking round? Uh, I'm not so convinced. They, they just can't allow that to happen. <laughs> they can't allow um, themselves to lose 2v4s like that. At the minute, they're staring down the barrel of a 5-1 half, um, which certainly isn't ideal here on Clubhouse, especially with the way SSG are playing, the fact that they've chained five rounds together. Um, you know, you've got players on there really starting to feel themselves now. Five kills for Fultz, six for J9, oh, five for Ashen. They're really starting to build that confidence. Well, for me, I've got to slow things down a little bit here. They've got to slow SSG down. They can't allow them to keep playing their game. I want to see Wolves get in here. You know, if you're a Wolves fan, you're looking for them to get in. Get themselves a man advantage. How many times have we seen Wolves say in a five versus three? It just hasn't been happening. So, Wolves, get in. Get yourself an entry. Get yourself a couple of kills. P4 does exactly that onto Fultz. And now build on it. But tell me you know about the man on this stairs. I think as Forrest takes a couple of shots, they will be aware of that now. Mm. It feels like simple phrase, but even Mogul there just being the, the util player in that scenario and trusting P4 to swing. Just shows that kind of maybe conversation is right. Let's slow things down. Let's stop playing like two separate teams and play as a unit. And that's exactly what they've got away with. Trick coming in here as well. Did we see the exothermic? No, we did not. If we took it off the wall in the end, and the good idea, as you can see, the bandit of forest is still there. Very much a staple for the defenses of SSG so far. We've seen it being brought out in the majority of rounds, and it's a limited effect, I'd argue, in most rounds. But here, at least, it has dissuaded Bibu away from this wall. Forrest is just going to keep playing uh, with the trick there. Needs to be careful, of course, because obviously any attention from Jim Window um, can sort of uh, 
Dislodge him from that position, but that in itself is fraught with danger when J90 is playing out in CCTV because he's got the full view down the balcony. And of course, Wolves were hit hard from there last time. Mowgli does want to try and move the bandit. The Eber barricade at the minute of the Azami being pivotal and allowing him to stay in position. Ashen there on support as well. But Wolves do manage. They will manage to get the wall open. The Tubera, we see in the great use of it now. It is going to slow things down. But as soon as that Zoto canister wears off, the Exothermic was pretty much at the end of its charge. They've got two more and there's 30 seconds. Should just, they can deal with it still, but it's likely to open because oh. of the speed of the charge. The, the problem is it's 12 seconds on this, I believe, yeah. as well. They're like, going to keep rotating. They're the going to have about 10 seconds left to actually execute here in a four versus four Magic. with no way of knowing what's on the other side of that wall right now. This is going to be scrappy. I can't wait. Go on. Exactly that. They're just, like you say, going to have to go in through doors and windows. The Tuberau is still doing the job of keeping that wall closed. Seconds. It's going to open with about five seconds to go, I think. Fibu manages to find hot and cold, and here comes the rush. But Ashen's ready. He manages to get two. J90 as well. And there, that lack of time, Des, is what we saw. It was down to a last five, ten seconds. As soon as this wall opens, as soon as the Zoto canisters wear off, and we can get in, we've just got to go. And Ashen was more than ready for it. Picks himself up a double and basically breaks the back of that attack a lot of deep size there on the wall side i think understandably as well but rather than talking about the losing side here let's talk about the winners and what they've done right there's one key word that really summarizes that half from me for ssg and it is discipline the number of times that we've seen a player from walls want to try and take a gunfight or swing in or whatever it might be try and cause some chaos SSG just hold their angles, plant their feet. They don't show themselves too much. They always look for favorable gunfights, especially when they've got a numbers advantage. And when you know Deadshot's one and five and Mowgli's one and six, you'd be fair for them to turn around and go, you know what, we could beat these guys in any gunfight. We're absolutely destroying them so far. But even right up to the end there, you still had them holding angles. You still had J90 sat at a distance, just watching for those window jump-ins. Everything looks composed, controlled. And again, that keyword, Discipline from SSG. A brilliant start to SI for them. If you remember before coming into the game, you know, I said SSG are a team that over the year, I feel like we've seen them on an upward trajectory. Um, you know, Atlanta, they made it to the quarterfinal. That was better than they'd done for the rest of the year in Copenhagen, for example. Uh, and I think we are seeing that continue. We've seen um, that team cohesion is being built on. It feels like they trust each other. The cover is always there. <laughs> you know, there's always somebody backing you up if you go in for a fight, whether it's J90 with Forrest, whether it's Ashen keeping them from coming in, Jim and the Breach. And There's always somebody there to help each other out. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them on attack because they're going to have to do that a little bit more dynamically. It can't be quite so pre-planned now. They're the ones that have got to come up with the ideas. They're the ones that have maybe got to work against time but 40 seconds in Des they're already comfortably in control of mid floor and can start pressuring onto site they are working well and they are working quick they are and for me I always say it Tim there are two halves to a game of siege things can go very wrong when a team switches over from a very successful half to the other side where things can just completely fall apart but at least the pace they're moving at so far 60 seconds in they've already established control they've made sure there's no backstab coming in they look quick Really interesting from Ashen there as well. He was literally, I think, hands off keyboard and mouse at that point. He was stood in the middle of the bar and it, you could see his hand as he was sort of, you know, gesturing. So he was hands off his mouse and it was just that, right, we've got everything we need inside of 40, 50 seconds. We can take a massive pause here. I can I can take my hand off my mic. We're going to have a chat and we're going to decide what we're doing and how we're going forward. It's been done quite quickly and now they're moving on in. Now they're finding kills. Forrest finds an opener on Tabibu. They're trying to work around the two out canisters so the Selma won't detonate for now but it's not going to matter if Forrest can just stand inside a moto and get kills. It's a temporary delay and they will not be too fussed about that unless the defenders can get them off the wall. I heard the impact come over and p Force managed to get himself out in the long corridor. What the hell happened there? No one was watching from main stairs and he's punished the attack on towards the church wall. Still it's a four versus two SSG could potentially pull this one back around. They've got time to work with, but Wolves have done enough here off the back of a big play from P4. Yeah, that's what it needs at the minute for, for Wolves is people stepping up, making those big plays. We always say you can't rely on hero moments, but sometimes you need them. And Wolves, it might just help them build a bit of momentum on the defence here. Don't forget, five rounds in a row have gone to SSG, so this is going to be a big moment for Wolves. If they can close this round out, they've got everything they need to now. Four versus three, clock ticking down. 
They've got the tools at hand. They just need to make sure they're picking up the kills. Hot and cold. He's going to get nothing from Dirt for free here. Uh, However, oh, oh, oh. maybe he will. He finds Shinka, but no. Mowgli with a double. P4 chips in. And that's going to be Wolves taking the round. Be good for morale, I think, for them to even get something on the board there. Again, Absolutely. P4 for me with the big play in that moment, just being able to get himself. Uh, realistically, it shouldn't be happening because attackers have got verticals down all of long. You sometimes have someone plant at the bottom of main as well, covering the players that are trying to push their way through the church wall. Uh, just really bites him in the backside when he had no right to be there in the first place. So a little bit of a slip there by SSG, but Wolves capitalize and get that crucial second round on the board. Otherwise, Tim, they'd be looking at a 6-1. And that is never a fun mountain to try and climb. No, absolutely not. Um, it was 100% it was, it was essential round for Wolves to win. Um, you know, we talk about these pivotal rounds. Unfortunately for Wolves, they've probably got another two essential rounds to win. Um, for me, they need to go a full defensive rotation. Three rounds, um, you know, three different sites. They need to win all of them. To really send a message to SSG, bring it back to 5-4, and then, yep, it's game on. But you just feel like if SSG can get that sixth round, get that map point, they're going to squeeze something somewhere because they're just on it um, today. The players, they're winning the gunfights, they're finding the kills, and you just know that opportunity is going to come along. SSG, um, you know, they're probably going to be looking back at that and saying, yeah, we've got to make sure that, you know, we're, we're staying attentive to those big players we can't let somebody just swing into long corridor and start picking kills up uh, you know it was going well for them forest had control and auto they were waiting for the selma to detonate they were getting themselves into good positions but yet they were absolutely hit hard um, and i'm sure that's something that they're going to take away into these next few rounds shows the peculiarities of siege where one small moment like that whether it was ashen's backstab from uh, strip early in the game whether it was people getting away with absolute murder up long that can be the deciding factor in these rounds now here, I'm looking again towards the Globals, with the KB coming in. The Grim, obviously not Globals, but still really good at assisting on the push-in and controlling areas of the map, which really enables Forest to do some work. There's a bit of prep work to do first, which they're working their way through. Problem is, it's gonna get tripped off here, Tim, and that is gonna be a stinger. These walls will probably stay closed, and that is not what SSG need in this attack, especially because they opted not to bring along the Thatcher. They're having to rely on those mini EMPs, and there's two left here in the back pocket of J90. Yeah, it's such a, a good point, really. The impact EMPs, they are a secondary gadget. They are not as powerful as Thatcher's sort of full force EMP, yeah. if you will. And you've just got to be so much more precise, and stopping the tricking with them is very, very difficult because you've got to get that timing exactly right, whereas the Thatcher... It just feels like you have a little bit more leeway and you tend to find a little bit more success of playing around the bandit, although it is still very possible um, for them to trick you out even with the uh, the Thatcher on the board. So, yeah, well played mm. there from Wolves to keep hold of that wall. That's going to do a lot of damage to this push potentially. They need to deal with the Blitz. That's going to be the next big challenge for Wolves. It is, but they're gearing up for a push in here as well. There is a player sat inside of Cash, right sort of idea. The question is... Are they going to back away? They've got some support from Mowgli inside of construction, which is nice. Making good use of the Azami in these last couple of rounds of Mowgli. Sees the head and realizes now the player has stepped away. The males to find himself getting pushed in off towards the right-hand side. So they've got to be really careful here if Wolves want to play this dance of death around Cash. Certainly do. Mowgli wants to be careful not to overpeak this. He knows that somebody's taking shots at the Kiba barricade. Nitro goes out, will be unsuccessful. Ashen just looking to follow a flash in there and see if he can get any mm. joy. But no, dips himself away to another window. But Mowgli wants to keep himself alive here. Of course, with the two barrow, he's got those Zoto canisters. We saw attempts to breach that cash wall previously to move Deadshot. So Deadshot really needs Mowgli to play smart here so oh, that he can dear. keep hold of that wall. Bibu manages to pick up Forrest and it is all starting to fall apart for SSG as Wolves find kill after kill. Mowgli has done his job with the Zoto canister as well. A flawless round for Wolves and they might just be on the comeback trail here on Clubhouse. What did I say after that sixth round, Tim? There are two halves to a game of Siege and you are seeing just that. You know, I'm not going to say SSG are maybe misplaying this to the level that Wolves did, but I actually think on the defense, Wolves are being so much more active than SSG, which is why despite SSG not really making mistakes, Wolves are punishing them. That hold then inside of cash, inside of construction, the team play of the Azami, of everything coming together was just absolutely enormous. And... I she couldn't find a way in. I want to give Mowgli the shout there as well. I picked up on it during the round. You know, we'd said earlier in this game he was over committing a little bit, a little bit ahead of the team, taking a few deaths that maybe he didn't need to. And I said in that position, it's really important because they've got faults there with a Selma still available. And he's been trying to breach that wall and that moves Deadshot out of position.
position, so it was really important that Mowgli played that smart, didn't overcommit. You could see he kind of wanted to peek that window. He kind of wanted that bit of action, <laughs> but no, he played it smart. Nitro over the top, staying behind Makiba Barricade. You saw the Zoto canister had been applied at the end of the round as well, so he was doing what he needed to do to back dead shot up, um, and just much better all round from Wolves. Really nice round, and they're, they're building something now. Five versus three on the scoreboard, and we're going to see CCTV and Cash. If you remember, I said Wolves really need to be winning three in a row. They need to be winning all of their defensive sites. Send a message to SSG, get the score back within one. Mm. So this is the last critical round for me. After that, we move into a bit of a different phase where Wolves can think about, actually, how do we go on and win this now? Absolutely. I think, I don't know if it's like a tactical thing or like a tactical strategical thing set out maybe by the coaching staff, but Wolves were put in as well, Mowgli in the middle of the team, so we can't run ahead is also a genius idea. Now, what I will comment on this round is looking at that lineup for Wolves, immediately your eyes jump, jump to the Tachanka and go, what the hell is that all about? But otherwise, it's the double electrification plus the two brow coming in that is going to make this an absolute headache to get through. The thing is, they do get the window open to Bibu here, and this window is now under threat. On the side of SSG, if you remember, we commented last time about how they'd struggled to what get the wall that? open. So this time, they've brought along the Thatcher, but it's all falling apart as they try to get aggressive. Wolves, they stand tall, manage to find themselves a bunch of kills. Fultz finds himself one on the fadeaway picking up dead shot but he's all alone in a one versus two wow this is looking wild in fact this round really epitomizes what we spoke about in the pre-show as well tim is that the introduction of tubarao and the very very slow gain that the current defender meta favors actually exacerbates the tdm meta it forces teams to play fast and go aggressive and that's exactly what you see in ssg do rather than getting hooked up into this game of tubarao and bandit and kaid and the slow play that comes out of the chanka they've just said right guys go for it run up red stairs charge at them force gunfights and hope for the best that's why things like the blitz become quite strong here is it does enable you to on a dime just spin and go from zero to 100 incredibly quickly here it hasn't worked out walls were ready they adapted well I think Fultz probably will find himself picked off here towards the back end of this round. And from what I've just heard, there is going to be a tack timeout coming in for SSG after this round because it has not been the dream quarter for them on the attack. Yeah, I think Fultz there just unaware that Shinker had maybe got as aggressive as he had, um, really moving himself along the uh, the garage catwalk there to just put himself in a position that wasn't going to be expected. So well played from Wolves there. Another good defensive round that leaves us now 5-4. Um, they are back in touch three rounds in a row and the message has been sent. SSG have received it. They're going to hit the tack timeout themselves and see if they can have any impact here. But on the attack, certainly not looking as cohesive as they did on the defense. Uh, you know, losing two, three people very, very quickly. If you remember coming out of that defensive half, I said how it looked like they were playing with a lot of trust. They always felt like, yeah, somebody's going to cover me. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get that because if not, there's a trade there. There's somebody backing me up. Whereas now, it, those trades aren't coming out. Wolves are getting two, three kills chained together, getting themselves man advantage. Um, so SSG just being picked apart a little bit. Yeah. Again, we've had those three rounds, that quarter, as I call it, of that attacking side. So understandable why after three losses in a row ssg have this tact timeout to figure out okay what's got to change and i imagine the words here are boys we had a great first half we're in the second now sure they're playing aggressive they're really making us ask questions we've got to figure things out here but let's take it slow breathe we're really good at getting map control in the early round because that's what Wolves. i'll give that to ssg actually quite clearly is at the start of around the first 60 to 75 seconds they're looking great at that start of the round in terms of getting control and especially attacking downstairs we've seen how good they were getting inside the map incredibly quickly where things then have started to fall apart is as we get towards the actual execute itself that's got to get tightened up They've got to be aware of walls and the aggression they're showing on the defense because again they're going from zero to 100 both sides are very quickly and walls will turn it on you if you give them the chance now then wolves it's uh back down to church and arsenal this is a rinse and repeat for them at it this point. Be. You know, they've done very, very well to control SSG. Last time around, SSG got map control very, very quickly. Uh, as I said, you know, they were sort of 30, 40 seconds in, stood inside a bar. Ashen um, was sort of hands off and just talking to the team and deciding where they go from there. Uh, Wolves, I don't think they necessarily need to do much too different, but they did rely on that kind of hero play from P4 to turn the round. So I feel like maybe a little bit of a presence to, to make SSG think a little bit more on this side. Don't give them 
so much map control. It'd be a shame after three rounds back to back to give up that opportunity now for SSG to actually win the map in regulation time, give them that match point opportunity. Um, but again, it looks like they've committed to that turtle defense. They're all going to be down on the basement level, so SSG going to have plenty of time. The big question, therefore, is do SSG learn from what went wrong last time? They've come in with such a execute heavy setup here on the SSG side where they're actually saying, you know what, we'll forfeit some of the early round. We don't mind playing a bit slower, but when it comes to the execute itself, assuming all five are alive, uh, this is going to be hard for Walsh. You've got the Monty in the front line. You've got the smoke cover coming out from both the Twitch and the Kappa Tower, the fire to move players, the Grim to move players. Arguably the Flores to help with that, including clearing out any shields or Azamis that are set up. They've just got a lot here that says to me, we want to hit site and we want to hit it like a truck. But it does require getting to that point in the round, which so far it looks like they'll be granted. Again, the early round from SSG has always been pretty good. They've not really let any cracks show through, which Wolves have then capitalized on. And by the looks of it, every Wolves player is downstairs on the site. This is dreamland right now for SSG. Yeah, it's going pretty well so far, as you said. Um, you know, the fact that they've brought this setup where it is, you know, going to be a little bit slower is not a problem because last time around they had so much time. Deadshot just burning out the utility in time that he can, uh, but there is still plenty of hard breach utility. Three charges left available on the side of SFG so they can get any hatches that they want and they can continue this push forward, just working to soften Wolves up. I think the important thing for SSG here, for me, is to find a kill or two. If they can get themselves into that 5v4, 5v3 potentially, yeah. the utility they've got on the board, there we go. Asher manages to find Deadshot. Now you start looking at it and thinking, right, how do Wolves deal with that Monty? How do they deal with that Capito? It's going to be difficult. Forrest, he's in there. He's feeding that information back. J9, he's backing him up, finds the kill onto Mowgli, and that leaves him oh. now. Important kill for Wolves comes in though. Bibu slams him through the wall. Carefully. This is a problem now because Forrest is a little bit left by himself with the team support. It's great. Faults on the upstairs. They know where one more is inside of dirt. The other's pushed inside. This should be easy for SSG to get the clothes they need. Hot and cold with a big 2k at the end as well. And that Monty, as we foretold him, was just so valuable on the execute. Remember what I said at the beginning of that round, and that was. It doesn't feel like SSG have been giving each other maybe the same cover and backup that they did when they were on defence. They needed to get that back. They needed to be able to put their players in a position where they could play confidently, knowing that their teammates were going to pick up the kills around them. And that was Forrest on the Monte. There was no fear inside of Armoury there because he knew that the backup was there. The trust was obviously there. The kills are going to come in. And boy, did they. Really nice attack from SSG. They recognised that the first time they attacked onto Church and Arsenal, they had all the time in the world. They maybe got a little bit ahead of themselves. They said, not this time. If they're going to let us play with two minutes, what operators can we use in that time? Monty, Capito, Grim. Yep, let's bring them all. Let's make it a nightmare to sit on side of sight. Well played, SSG. All right. I don't imagine we'll see a similar setup this time where it's all the whole very Monty-heavy slow play because Walls will somewhat be anticipating it could happen again. So here are more standard comp by the looks of it coming out for the side of SSG. The nut for me really looking to be the surprise factor here. Forrest is playing the Blitz previously. Never mind, it's been changed away. This is why we don't talk about others. Back over to the KB then. Again, looking pretty standard and staple as a lineup, I think. On the defensive side, you've seen that combo that we've seen from both teams on this map. That Blitz, sorry, the Bandit and the Two Brow in conjunction with one another. As we picked up on as they struggled with the impact EMPs earlier on, um, we do see and have seen a number of times Ashen bringing along the Thatcher. Um, so one problem last time was how long it took them to get the Jacuzzi wall breach. Uh, we'll see just how quickly they can get that done this time. It is Fultz on the Hibana this time. Um, so we'll see whether that impacts the ability to get in there as well. well. That pace really, again, has been looking very good. Ah, oh, just being, paying the price there. And I guess some of the stingy part of that, that's your Thatcher off the board, Tim. 40 seconds into Big the off. round. And you're relying on that really with the Habana, especially when trying to push him from the west side. I know they've put a very heavy focus on to the, the east side of things here, coming in from Cash DC and working their way across. But it will hurt them when you know that you've got the two Brown and the Bandit on side. Uh, the, now first, the first charges were detonated, the Xkaros, so that does still make it a little bit more difficult for Deadshot to stay in here. Even though Mowgli is now backing him up with the Zoto canisters, it's just creating multiple angles for him to play against. You've got, you can hear the Xkaros are going to detonate on his other wall as well. 
it's getting to a point where Deadshot is going to have to be moved away. So they've done a better job of this of SSG this time. Forrest yeah. manages to get a double. Mowgli onto Hot and Cold. Three versus three. Deadshot needs to be dealt with, but isn't. Mowgli goes wild elsewhere. And all of a sudden, it's a three versus one for Wolves. And they keep themselves fighting. I think we're probably going to see all 12 at least, as Good bit of team play there from Deadshot and Mowgli holding out towards this side of the map. And you've seen that team play coming in so much stronger on the defensive side than on the attack. On attack, they look like two completely separate players that aren't aligned on the pace they want to move at. The defensive side, chuck them in an area and say, hold this down. And with the backing of P4 and the Azami behind them as well, they've looked rock solid. And for a second, I really thought SSG would run away with the round when they got that two or three kill flurry, but completely turned around by Walls and Fultz. Left in a 1v3, 6-5, it looks like, look like it's going to be here, Tim. Seeing the alternative use of those auto canisters as well. Fultz manages to work around it as he jumps in the window and gets the headshot onto Morgley. One versus three becomes one versus two. 45 seconds, so he's got plenty of time to play with. The problem that he's got is that they now know exactly where he is. Um, Fultz does have Diffuser in hand, so, you know, there is a, a potential opportunity there. He's going to use the utility against them, take cover behind the weights, and he might just have an opportunity to get this down here. Deadshot has to rotate, and he's going to come off it, but... There was potential oh. that he could have stuck it. He manages no. to bring it back to 1v1. He knows where the last one is. And that could be a smart rotate through the fire, Des. 15 seconds to play with, though. He's got to catch his know. man. And Shinka is so good in these clutches. But Fultz has got to go fast. He's got to go quick. Looks out towards main stairs. He misses the shots. Fultz could find it. But no. Shinka holds on to that title as Clutch Master Supreme and gets it over the line for Wolves. That is much closer than Wolves would have wanted to see it. Great play from Fultz. I particularly love the rotation through that Vulcan fire the Goyo Canister had put on the door because as defenders, you're looking at that and you're thinking, construction door's fired off. He's inside a site. He's not going to come from construction side. As it was, Shinka was able to get the read on it. He probably heard the vault as Fultz came into logistics. But still, really smart play from Fultz to just choose. I'm going to take that bit of damage because it's going to give me an angle that they won't expect in this 1v1. So a good effort. And I picked up on it at the time. Fultz just moving away from the window. Um, so we've talked oh, about Tubero and his ability to stop. And we've seen his ability to stop um, those hard breaches to freeze them out. But it's also worth remembering that that Soto Canister will also slow down operators. So if you try and move through that frozen area, you're going to be restricted in your movement. Everything's going to slow down. So it is a really big hindrance if you're going into a gunfight. And we saw Mowgli, smart use of it, put it on the window. That's where I'm being challenged from. I don't need to worry about any more breaches. I've got a bit of utility to spare. So I'm going to put it out there and I'm just going to slow down any push that's coming my way. As it was, Bolts managed to work around it very well. But still, a nice alternative use of those auto canisters. Onto the downstairs we go, and a bit of a change away, of course, from SSG from the last attack they pulled off here. They kind of masterminded it once with a very, very slow attack, and now have kind of gone back towards that more standard setup that they need to make work. He's a little bit nervous just thinking about it, given it didn't work too well the first time around, but it all comes down to this round, Tim. SSG win it, they take that 7-5 win, off to a great start in this best of three. Wolves take it. Guess where we're going, Tim? <laughs> I'm not going to say it yet, Des. Everybody's winning. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's waiting. It wouldn't be SI without us uh, seeing a few extra rounds here and there. I'm sure it will happen numerous times across the next couple of weeks. Um, for now, Ashen is going to get himself quickly down to the bottom of main stairs. SSG working quickly once again. Um, something that we, they were able to do previously. Aww. What a kill from Ashen. Beautiful. Just uses that information. If you remember, Des, we picked up on one of those drone blockers that was positioned in there previously. It was actually SSG that used it on the defense. And it just shows why we said it was such a good vision blocker to use because Ashen's just got an absolute freebie. Ashen walks away. It's just... Timing was bad. <laughs> a little bit off there. Just a, just a tickle off. And obviously, Bibi in a spot where he's trying to still hold down here. May well get away with it as long as he's quick about it. We'll try and stick it. Is it going through in time? I think the ace won't get it actually as well. Don't forget that got slightly tweaked where now the detonation time is four seconds from 3.2. Without that, that probably goes off. Yep, they've made a mess of that. There's no other way of saying it. Sorry, SSG. Um, the missed time, it, it's on that initial Thatcher, really. Um, the fact that was mistimed and the, the hard breach gadget just got zapped off by the electricity to begin with, that then gave the space to Bibu to be able to play around it. So despite having man advantage, SSG, they're going to have problems to work against here because they're not going to get the access that maybe they wanted. And they did get the entry, so really you're looking at this the same with 60 seconds to go in a 5v4. 
you'd be hoping they could get away with something, but the things around it, like those hatches being opened up, is what could yet come back to bite them. They've got no Esparos left as well. Hopefully everything is open. They need open, except for that bar hatch. I really want this player out of blue, and right now the Azami is not moving an inch. This is it, you know, you can put more Grim Canisters in there, but Deadshot oh, has proved Deadshot. that he's willing to stay in and amongst him. He's got the Diffuser, what a smart read from Deadshot. He knows oh. they've got to challenge him, but Hot and Cold comes around the corner. Here come Shinka. SSG, oh. and they manage in the last 30 seconds to turn it around, around. They looked like it would be going in the direction of Wolves. Is overturned, and SSG G, they managed to take Clubhouse. Wow, wow, wow. Woo. What a first map. I mean, if you look at it at kind of a quality level, maybe the attacks could have been better from either side, most definitely. But when it mattered most, they managed to pull it out the bag. We commented on that five versus four. Hatch is still being closed, and they just send it down, Blue Tim. They get the kills they need. Wolves are going to be kicking themselves that they couldn't save that so close to the end. Ashen really opens that up with the swing onto Deadshot as he comes around the corner and hits the headshot behind the Kiba barricade. Deadshot's done everything right. He moves himself into a new position, takes cover, recognizes he's got the diffuser. It's a smart read from him. There's no other way to put it. But then the swing comes around the corner, the pre-fire onto the head. It just opens it up for SSG. And that is, you felt like exactly what they needed. They needed that hero moment. Yeah. It's not going our way. 3v3 becomes 3v1 in a heartbeat. And they win yeah. the round. They win the map. Great from them. Zoom. <laughs> what I think it sets up, though, is the fact that this is the best of three. I'm so glad we get to see more maps of these two going 100%. out. 100%. Because that was, that was a real brawl back and forth. Both teams looking pretty convincing on the defense. The attack a little bit less so. What comes next is really anyone's guess, I think. And the only one way to find out about that is to go to a break. And when we come back, map two awaits. See you guys in a few.
there it is. Our first map done and dusted. SSG just about squeaking over the finishing line against Wolves. At the halfway mark, Tim, 5-1 on the defensive half for SSG. It looked like it was going to be a quick map, but Wolves did battle back, if not for a couple of great executes by the side of SSG to get things over the line on their attacking half. Yeah, you've got to say that at the halfway mark, especially, it looked like it was going to be sort of much uh, much quicker than it was. Wolves, they showed some good fight to get themselves back into it, but a couple of things along the way that you look at, uh, you know, and you just you wonder, um, you know, how things are going to be for them going forward. We'll keep an eye on it um, as we go through Cafe, but um, ultimately <laughs> opening the game up, Asher managing to find that shot in blue. But um, SSG, for me, looking pretty good. Uh, use of time, use of utility, good so far. And uh, not rattled by the fact that Wolves came back at them. Able to get it done before going to overtime. Um, so looking good. We agree. I mean, that in blue at the very end there, I really thought was going to go against SSG and we'd find ourselves forced into overtime. But denied at least here by the American side. And that doesn't mean that map is their choice. It is their win. Now we get to go into Cafe, which I spoke about earlier on. Very interesting map pick. Given for these two teams, it's one of their lower preference maps. Walls, I think, picking this have got something in mind. They've got an idea. They've got some counter strats prepped. That's what I'm looking forward to. Seeing. I think we're going to see more from Wolves. Um, I do. I think it was, you know, albeit far a couple of mistakes, still a pretty good performance. I, you know, picked up on a couple of things. Mowgli's use of Tubra was good. Um, you know, I think that they, they've got the foundation there. They just need to to get rolling, and maybe their own map is is kind of what they need. And uh, maybe they take us all the way to the. That would be lovely. A good best three to kick things off using all three maps. Be the dream. One thing I did remark at the end, obviously, with SI being entirely best of threes, the beautiful thing is that you see a map first map like that and just think, well, you really get the feeling there'd be something else to come from another map between these teams. Well, you get to see it, if not potentially going all the way into three. So it's not just a best of one decider. You get all remit of all the teams showing their map pool depth as well, I think, because as you come towards that third map in consulate, that again is one of those maps that you'd look at and say, okay, it's not a team either team really wanted. It was left out in the cold until the very, very end. That could really show something quite different given it's one of the newer maps as well. Yeah, I think it's going to show, you know, need to show a little bit more adaptability from the teams, you know, who can go in there uh, and react uh, to what they're seeing in front of them better than the others may be the one who comes away with that win. But we've got to get there, Wolves. Uh, you know, they showed great resilience in that first map to get it back um, to be as close as it was. Uh, but, you, you know, you've got to ask how much is that going to sort of beat them up mentally a little bit? They managed to get themselves three rounds. They got rolling. They still lose it anyway. Is that going to have an impact on them coming into the second map of Cafe? We'll see when we load in but for me the thing that Wolves need to be really careful of is they cannot let SSG get that runaway start again that we saw them have on Clubhouse it was 5-1 at the half on map one and Wolves just you know I don't think you can keep coming back from that and hoping to uh, you know successfully sort of win a large number of maps so for me looking for a better start from Wolves on this one sure and I imagine then a few minutes you have to step away from the desk actually have a conversation as a team about things to correct going into the next map Probably quite a few things both teams will look at. We did remark for Wolves on their attacking side. It looks disjointed. Often you see Mowgli ahead of the rest of the team, and that's got to get pulled back in. I had my first round of SI shocker after just four rounds. So hopefully that's been corrected and at least addressed during that break. Attack for me is where this map is going to be defined, though, because Cafe historically has always been difficult to attack is the best way to describe it. I know you've got an absolute, I wouldn't even say love-hate, just a hate relationship with the top floor, for example. So for both teams... It. For both teams, it's going to come down to how they attack on this map. So whoever starts on the attacking side, when we find out, I believe it's going to be SSG. Yeah. That's what I'm excited to see. How many rounds can they pull away? Will it be a stronger performance than what we saw from Walls on their first half attack back at the club? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've got a slight technical delay, so we're going to have a very short break. And I mean very short. It's going to be just a couple of minutes, I think. And we'll get back and right into the action. Don't go anywhere. As well, right? It takes G2 a couple of minutes, maybe two minutes before they can finally start to do something with the control that they've created for themselves. If you look at Skyscraper and that also being G2's pick, that allows NIP to pick what side they want to start on, you'd, you'd imagine they go for defense because it's, it's a stronger side right now and it allows them to play that slow defensive playstyle that we know NIP does best. That's definitely going to help them. If you talk about the mental aspect as well, being able to come back from this significant loss you've just faced, being able to come back on your defensive half on Skyscraper is going to really bode well for you. Yeah, I think it also further puts into perspective the fact that this is a map that NIP had picked, so they felt confident. They felt like this yeah. is where they could take G2 to the battle. This is where they could take G2 and potentially 
yoink it away from them, but that wasn't really the case. So if a little bit of a refresher and a reminder when it comes to these map vetoes, the next map that we will be heading on is going to be Skyscraper, but that's then, Ali, the other side where it's actually G2's map pick. Yeah, I think that Skyscraper, we look at it and we think it's a map that G2 know very well. It's a yeah. map that suits them down to the ground. The attacks can be punishing on Skyscraper. Let's make that clear. It can yeah. be a very difficult map to attack into, particularly when you look at how you can sort of abuse some of the operators available on the defense right now. I'm expecting to see a very similar ban line up here. But yeah. G2, they got it together on those attacking rounds. It took them to get one under the belt, but that's not... Aha, you're used to increasing timers, but not ones that get shorter. I did say it was going to be a quick one. He did, to be fair. He did tell, tell you about that. I did tell you not to go anyway. Basically, what we found out is our producer wanted to save you guys the waffle of Tim talking about how much he loves the hotel uh, iron. Why'd you love it? It can be hit or miss, kind of hotel iron, but this was a good one. Um, it has a steam function. Which is often something missing from hotel irons. Yeah, no, um, to be fair, none of them are not water ones, are they? They're no, just exactly. Like, they're, just, yeah. they're just hot. Yeah. Uh, they don't have the, they don't the, have the water and the want. steam. Um, so that was a big plus. Um, I like my shirts to look crisp. Um, mm. I only wear the crispest shirts and the... Freshest I can't remember water. the rest of the meme. But yeah, I don't know. The freshest clothes and the... I'm not cool enough something. to know it, obviously. So. Uh, our memory's going at our old ages, Tim. It's screwed. It is. Absolutely screwed. Do you want to watch some more Siege, Joe? Uh, should we talk about some more Siege, Tim? Let's do it. Go on, then. Let's do it. We're heading into Cafe. It's going to be map two between SSG and Wolves. If you're only just joining us, that first map was on Clubhouse. And SSG, after a 5-1 start to things, uh, managed to just get it over the line 7-5 after a good fight back from Wolves. So I'm sure we're in for another close affair here on Cafe. The band's reigning in. Monte, Ying, Solis will be our first three. And Mira will round things out. Yeah, Wolves have a real hate-hate relationship with Mira. I look back at the stats again for the previous map of Clubhouse. I think on eight of the last ten times they've played that map, they've banned Mira on the defensive side. And it wouldn't shock me if the other two times was the enemy team banning it away. They just do not want to play against Mira under any circumstance. Admittedly, the maps do weigh into it. Cafe, I think, as we all know, especially on that top floor, she can be so oppressive. So just having her taken away, the C4 removed, all the rest of it. Definitely nothing to be complaining about too much if you're Attackers on the side of Wolves. SSG, though, as we said, will start on the attacking side. And for me, there's going to be a lot told in this first half because attack is where both teams have struggled. Many suspected that coming into this major. I was talking a little bit about it last night with like a little podcast that's quite fun with me, Zenots, Girls and Fresh. And Fresh was saying this may be the major, that the event or a major event where you see the highest defender win rate given how the meta currently sits. And at least with how the map has played out so far, or the series has played out so far, yeah, Fresh is looking pretty right. See how things carry on though here. Let's get into round one. It's going to be on that reading and fireplace site. Then. Yes, we're not going to top floor. Um... <laughs> For your health. <laughs> I've said it countless times over the years. It's always, you know, seen as like a primary site choice is the top floor. Um, but when you look at the stats over the years, it is very rarely statistically the best defensive site. Uh, mm. Reading tends to be much higher as the site. Um, so we are going to see Wolves taking us down there. Got the Valkyrie now. I love a good Valkyrie cam. Um, we're going to see them applied to that top floor. Looks like they're going to be playing to keep hold of it as well with the reinforcements, but it proves everything else. They're going to try and keep themselves established up on that top floor. You don't want to give those verticals up especially not too soon uh, because you're going to get hammered from above generally speaking although that being said there's, there's not a lot of soft breach available on the side of SSG they're pretty much limited to those Rotero drones of Flores well obviously you can burn through puns if you want to with the Habana just keep plugging away yeah, two, two pallets two pallets two pallets two pallets and no one can really deal with that seemingly ever the interesting one for me is with that Valkyrie on side, I thought we'd see a lot more IQ coming and getting matched up where a Valkyrie's left open, given again IQ's now got nades, it's actually not a bad operator to bring. The problem with IQ, as always though, is it's not really an operator that you plan for when you're thinking about comps that you want to bring along. Like every operator that SSG have brought along here has all been planned as part of the, the strat they want to bring to try and attack in towards this site against Wolves. Admittedly, not tons of insight to have against Wolves. They've only played this map once in the last six months, and that was against BDS in Stage 2. We mentioned it earlier on, SSG have played this map six times and only beaten Team Bliss and Wildcard on it. Outside of that, everything else has been a loss. So Wolves coming here into a map they don't really play for me against a weak map for SSG. It's kind of a, we think we're not great on this map, but we know you are equally nowhere near as good as we will be. Therefore, we've got no problem bringing you here and counter-stratting you to death. Good opening C4 comes through onto Ashen. I absolutely love that Nitro Toss. If you haven't tried it, take it away with you. Get it in your rank game. Up through the hatch, out onto the east window. Absolute beauty if you can hit it. That's exactly what Mowgli does. Deadshot loses his life along the way. Oh, Morris is no. 
Boris is a pretty important operator at the minute. I mentioned that vertical destruction. Obviously, the gridlock has got the shot here um, and is able to do a little bit of that work that they might need. So, Forrest oh, certainly no. needs to be careful if they want him to keep hold of that top floor. But Shinka, with the use, I would guess, of those Valkyrie cams, is going to know exactly when and where. Oh, and takes no. down Fultz with the bad. Nitro. They have no idea if it was there. He's about to get an absolute freebie here. Finds one for himself. Surely could round the corner and find one more. I believe it was Forrest who was working in just behind him at this point. Yep, there he is. Lisa's got a bit of a penned in, but you're down to a massive numbers disadvantage here. Going to find himself getting burnt out. Maybole just died to the fire here. Just about escapes. Forrest waiting for him to move. We'll find his man and finally get the clean down, but as equally a trade on the main stairs as Mode gets hot and cold. A one versus three for SSG. The round has crumbled to him. Yeah, it certainly has. And the, the thing you've got to look at is SSG haven't even really got be beyond the first step. They haven't taken top floor control. They, you know, yeah, they've kind of got it now, but they've kind of been given it really because Wolves just dropped away at the point where Bibu died. They were like, you know what? We're three versus one. We don't really need to sacrifice anybody else on the top floor. Just kind of let him do what he wants. We'll kill him when he comes to sight. So yeah, SSG never really able to get themselves going in that round. Didn't get any top floor control. Didn't really get a man advantage at any point. Um, and Wolves just completely dominating that read in sight. And as I say, that's one of the reasons that I like it so much. You've got those extra steps that you've got to go through before you can start thinking about that execute on society. And teams will often struggle with it on the attack. Great use of intel as well from Wolves. Um, you know, having the bulletproofs, having the Valkyrie cams. And sometimes they were kind of looking, they weren't in exactly the same position. So the bulletproof was looking all the way down into Cigar Shop. Um, so it had a really nice view down there. But I think sometimes that placement, when you've got the Valkyrie cam nearby, looking at Cocktail specifically, attackers may come in and they'll recognize the bulletproof camera. And I think sometimes you can see that bulletproof and think, oh, you know, this can happen with other utility. But you see it and you think, we've got the information utility. Bulletproof's gone, sorted. And you don't think maybe they had a Valkam watching the same thing. Maybe they had, a, you know, and so it survives and you get your nitros and you get your other things going on. But Wolves played that really well. Nice defense. They're going to move us on this time to the top. Ooh, that happy? Top floor. No, we'll allow we'll, 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 we'll it for a second round. <laughs> I do like the approach they're taking here. It's really just a stop. Oh, good night, Bibu. Shut down by Ashen there, who was ready for the spawn peak to come out. I believe it was actually SSG who were quite aggressive on their spawn peaks on the previous map of uh, runouts coming out of Kitchen, from example, in round one from Hutton. Saw Ashen lurking out towards Strip an awful lot. Here, though, it's going to be aggression from Walls onto the other side that draws first blood. And I was going to say, I like the setup they've got here because you've got the Azami on side. You've got the shield down from the warden. You've got the castle. They really want to hold aggressively on towards the west side of this top floor and slow SSG down. But I feel losing the Wumai so early on, so now you're going to have less magnets to catch nades, for example. That's going to stink. Yeah, it's not the ideal um, operator to be losing. I think it's a fine line between confidence and over-aggression. Um, you know, if Bibu gets the kill, we're sat here saying, yeah, what a fantastic start. Wolves are really taking the game to them. But certainly not going to be critical of it. But it's something that they just need to be careful of going forward. You know, you can't sort of let that then snowball round after round after round. No. Um, you know, yep, you had a very good round one. Bring that confidence in. Try to get the aggression at the beginning. Let SSG know that they're in a game. It hasn't worked out. It's still a site that you can hold on to in a 4v5. Absolutely. And for now, for SSG, it's that kind of sniffing things out, figuring out, okay, what are we actually facing up against here? What's the play going to be? I know they've got this man advantage, and this is the best thing that teams can do. You get that first kill, you can play one for one trades and win the round. So slow things down, reassess the situation, and then make a call to get those more favorable gunfights going your way. For now, at least, Walls have not backed away after losing that opening uh, gunfight. Bibu cleared them at least somewhat expendable, otherwise wouldn't have committed him towards those gunfights. B4 slowly being burnt through here, narrowly avoids the angle from Snow Door and will keep himself alive. The Valkyrie uh, is an interesting one that I'm watching at the minute. Uh, Deadshot playing underneath, brought the impact nades, um, has allowed him to make a rotation. Quite often, obviously, we'd see the Nitro on the Valk, but if you're going to play underneath um, with cams above, you're sort of playing for that denial of the plant, so an impact nade gives you two opportunities to do that. You can just blow out the feet um, of the planter, shoot up through the holes that you've created. You don't necessarily need that sort of instant kill from the Nitro mm -hmm. in order to do the job to achieve the objective that you've set out for. So, Deadshot will continue working that underneath for the time being, but the push is going to come on to Morgley and he's going to have to hold on. Just saw loads of gadgets suddenly get pulled out by SSG. Hot and Cold has dumped everything in towards site. They're in, trying to make it happen. Mowgli's got one from inside. Piano faults off towards New Bout, gets one back on the other side. I spoke about this one-for-one -one play, but Ashen's got himself a second in the round. SSG all but cleaned up. It's just Shinka left standing in a one versus three. 
And they'll win that one comfortably. Ashen, I believe, with a three or even about a four in that round, Tim. Morkley just missing a few shots there. He did well on the first kill that he got, but he had the opportunity with the man stood sort of caught out, really, in the middle of the bar. And Ashen was able to just swing on him and win that fight despite sort of having a, a second advantage over him, Morgley there. Not able to lock it down, might just rue that one. Um, but SSG, yes, able to get their first attack up on the top floor, and that will leave us in a 1-1 on the scoreboard now. I commented on it in the round, but again, the discipline from SSG on the last map was the key highlight. But I think in that round, we saw them get that entry kill. And rather than looking to kind of force gunfights, they actually just said, forget about it. 5v4 execute, we think we can win the gunfights and we force Wolves to engage us as we start looking for the execute. And it was just so well orchestrated. Again, you saw the dumping utility coming in. Wolves simply could not do enough to hold back the onslaught that was SSG. Down we go, though, into Kitchen Tim. We've got the mozzie on side here for Deadshot, who I imagine you'll probably see getting off and busy around site. Yeah, you would expect so. Um, again, just trying to, there's no Solace available, banned out. So again, it's just, you know, what can we do to try and deny that little bit of information, especially on a kitchen hold? Because what's going to happen here is the defenders of Wolves, they're going to try to hold on to at least the mid floor that we're looking at, potentially up onto the top floor as well. Um, so as much of sort of a blackout zone as you can create by stopping the drones getting in there uh, really helps you to do that because it's meaning then that Wolves are um, able to take those gunfights as a little bit of an advantage. SSG are having to go in and face check. They're having to go in without knowing everything that's ahead of them potentially. So Deadshot just trying to make that roam clearance a little bit more difficult. On the attacking side, the ram really well tells you. It gives away the game here for SSG. That vertical control. Get everything opened up. Use those uh, launchers coming out from Ashen to feed whatever's going on downstairs. Bounce them into the right spot. Figure out where players are hiding in and execute off the back of it. But just everything screams though vertical control for them. Looking at the nades coming out of the IQ, the buck as well. That's going to be the main play, and that is why I think you've got a couple of players from Wolves at the minute at least playing up on this first floor, hoping to upset one or two on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Drones just going to be taken out there a couple of time for Morgley. Also picks up um, Am. And yeah, it's hacked, I imagine, by Brava. Yeah, by Brava drone. Uh, just after taking it out. So again, just starving them of information. And SSG playing a little bit slowly here. We're getting to halfway through the round. We'd expect them you know, to potentially be working towards Kitchen at this point. <laughs> Morgley gets away with one. Manages to pick up a draw. Oh, the also, the kill. The Nitro Ooh. gets shot out by Forrest. Beautiful stuff as the book manages to keep himself alive. But Morgley still gets away with a big advantage for Wolves there. He does and walks away with it. I think it was lucky that he was looking for the draw. <laughs> False drop a dunk on it. Down goes dead shot. Second one coming back on the other side. They're the super short to finish things off onto Ashen. Again, not quite a dream scenario for SSG. Down two members. Four still up on the side of Wolves. Feels like the French side are at least in control of this round. And they've done a good job in trying to disrupt this first floor control that SSG were very sorely seeking. They do still have the round. They've still got the names of the IQ. They've still got the book. Everything they need to get things open is here. It's just a little bit less of a punch without the Grim on side when it comes around to the execute. Yeah, they're going to be working those verticals, but they're about 35 seconds behind where we would hope um, for an mm. attack inside to be here on Cafe. Uh, so it could well come down to a late and dramatic push through something like Freezer Hack, for example. Um, Forrest continues his work as Fultz looks to push down those stairs and maybe just apply a little bit of pressure laterally as well. Uh, I don't think he's too sure about what's going on inside of VIP at the minute. Um, we can't quite see off to the right of his screen, but Shinka is still there in behind the shield. I'm not sure that ooh, the nade does just so manage to catch the shield. That's big, but Shinka can just play his life here, really, and hold on. Mowgli P4 managed to pick him up at the bottom of white, and this is what happens when you've got to walk down there and challenge. You get sprayed through the soft wall. Shinka knows where the last is. He makes the call, and P4 steps forward, gets that final kill, and that is going to be the round for Wolves. A nice hold there. Use the information well. Use the utility well ssg never really comfortably in control of the map and we'll took full advantage of that shinka just being served up as the perfect bait to ssg as well they were so focused on destroying the shield and swinging the player weren't even aware that mowgli was sat outside to what near restaurant and bar just swung out on towards bottom white as you say and picked up faults he wasn't even looking the right way and they had a player sat on freezer door ready to swing when a drop came through Walls just read into that attack perfectly. At least the fractured attack that was left when only three members of SSG were still left standing. 
I commented that I'd really was keen to see how the attacks go in the first half of this map. If SSG could, you know, undo the, Ooh, the misfortunes nice. that I guess Walls and Jordan their first half back on Clubhouse. Hey, that's the wrong map. But here we stand. <laughs> A little look at what we were talking about there in Clubhouse. <laughs> I mean, it was a nice, a nice kill to have a replay. Yeah, it was off. nice. Yeah, I'm not going to about that. I enjoyed it too. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> so, let's see if they can get anything. That's the first quarter down as well. Let's talk about the game in terms of quarters. SSG managed to get that one single round. Wolves, really, I imagine, maybe look at that and say, Bar and Cocktail, do we just swerve it? Given they just executed through Scarlet once they had the five versus four, they may well try and do it again. We could deny that away from them and make them have to fight us because that's where we're winning so far. Exactly that. So round four is going to be back in reading this time around. Last time SSG lost this oh, one on the attack. Man. They were just unable to hey. get, in, get any presence. <laughs> this time the spawn peak does work out. Mowgli manages to pick up Ashen. Those two have been in real battles at the beginning of rounds. They've killed each mm. other plenty of times. Um, and this time it is Mowgli who comes out on top. So SSG's um, problem last time, as I was just in the midst of saying, was getting control of top floor. They were never really in a position to be able to use those verticals and Pressure site. They basically never completed step one. Hot and cold. He's just trying to sneak his way in here. I don't think that the Fenrir is oh. fully aware. P4 knew somebody was there, but not exactly where. And that's going to level things up. And this might just change the dynamic a little bit because Wolves can't focus on that top floor hole completely because they now know that they've got somebody inside of train. They have got a player above, though, that can watch down through the vertical and see what's going on. And I imagine that's going to be part of the game at least for now maybe pushing their way down wide and getting a bit of a sniff as to what's going down Deadshot finds faults and here we go the push comes all the way through and Deadshot has just undone all the ground taken by SSG and once again the French side have a massive numbers advantage 3-1 inbound I feel like Deadshot overall, um, he's been a little bit quiet here on Cafe. But I mean, they're been, his first two kills. Yeah, this, he's, he's not doing bad, though. There's been a number of um, sort of smart players, really smart choices. Um, but uh, we'll see if that can continue. Maybe a couple of kills here in round four is just going to boost him into this map a little bit more. But SSG certainly starting to struggle now as it is two versus four. And it's uh, just becoming difficult for them once again to even get inside of the map. Wolves, they're just going to hold on to that top floor now. There's no way, realistically, that SSG... SSG can go inside of sight until they've cleared this out. But they're going to get themselves in piano again. I know maybe try and work his way across and get into train. But it's going to be very difficult for SSG to get anything going. Well, and again, Deadshot's really undone all the hard work they had going there. But I do want to give a shout out to Mowgli as well. On the attacking side, we had a lot of criticism, or at least I did. Going onto the defensive side was better on club here because he started on defense and playing incredibly well. Sat at 6-1 and one at the minute. Big problem here is don't let them take the isolate two D ones because that's what SSG have really just found there. There was at least the guaranteed trade coming in, and no one on the side of walls really to respond. And being so far back, you can see one on white, for example. They do have the ability to swarm in here if things start going from bad to worse. But Mowgli there almost got shot off as well on white stairs, a couple of inches to the right, and that was a headshot. Time is going to be the factor here as we come into the final 20 seconds. SSG need to make a push forward. Forrest has got Diffuser in hand. Again, I know, just keeps battling there, but Forrest is miles away. He's going to have to start looking for kills realistically. He's trying to clear out that White Stairs uh, position, but Morgley, he's alive, he's alert. He manages to get both. There's a big finish. You picked up on him partway through the round. He's going from strength to strength here, from Clubhouse to Cafe, and looking pretty good. SSG timeout coming in, I hear, and expect that will be because, as you can see, they're down three and one. Not really seeing any success on the attacking side here. We did mention coming into the map, this is not a strong map for either team. So it's not wholly unsurprising that SSG are struggling on the attacking side. I would, again, put a lot of that down to the proactivity of Walls rather than outright errors by SSG. Sure, there's been some, but Walls have been very good at holding ground they know they need to hold and contesting extremely aggressively. That round may be sure letting the Nook come crouch walking in towards train. Uh, not really an ideal scenario, but prior to that, I feel they've controlled the map really well. Just playing a pretty good standard game of cafe, I think. Yeah, I think it, it, it seems quite clear um, that this is Wolves' map. Uh, you know, coming in, it's obviously they're a lot more comfortable than they were back on Clubhouse, um, especially on the defence here, doing very well. SSG, they just need to try and lock down a couple of rounds because at the minute it's just getting away from them. They're not really getting close, especially those two reading attacks. They've, like I said, never been in a position to be able to execute onto site. They've never really been in full map control. They've just been sort of clutching at whatever small areas of the map they could get to use from. And 
So Wolves, um, you know, definitely in good control. They're going to be uh, down. Yes, as you said, they're not going to move up to top floor. They're going to be down on the mid floor again. This time it's going to be mining. Um, so it's going to be the other mid floor site. And that makes perfect sense because SSG have done nothing to threaten them from above in the last couple of rounds when they've played on this floor. So... Yep, just double down on it, Wolves. Just, you know, you can do the same again. Just hold on to that top floor. Don't allow SSG any space inside the map. And it's unlikely they're going to pick you apart. Mm. Ten seconds left. That towards a very kind of heavy you know, setup with the Azami and the castle on side as well. We spoke about this. I imagine that suggests they're going to defend upstairs, but obviously could the Swerve, Plane Bar and Cocktail up. We thought they might. Here it's more just to hold ground and then back away a little bit later on. So keen to see if SSG can crack it this time around because they can't just execute through Skylight. You've got to work through the whole of the top floor, clear it, and then look for an execute on that second floor itself. Somehow, I just don't get the feeling Wolves going to make it that easy for them, right? Time to ring some no, absolutely not. Fultz immediately opening up the castle barricade and um, just trying to take away some of that utility. I don't know if there's a little bit of info to say that there was somebody in and around bar there. Deadshot gets himself away. Needs to be careful because there is one on the library door as well, but just dip himself into cover um, and is again just oh, going to be trying to waste as much time as he can. Mm, I hope they know that about the claymore. Yeah, so that's if he left that and ran away, I'd be like, uh, question mark, but has redeployed it, pulled it back further away from that jammer. That's one hell of a range of it caught him, by the way. Even the double stack, I love it. Just, uh, being cautious that they're not going to uh, get run out on all those east windows tells us exactly what SSG are going to be trying to do, which is get on the repel of the east windows, get themselves established inside a cocktail, move across, take piano, and then they can start thinking about sight because they will need that vertical control. I'm not sure exactly where Mowgli is positioned at the minute, but on the Azami, there is a potential for him to be inside a piano. That's exactly where we find him. That is going to make it very, very difficult with those Kiba barricades um, for SSG to get in and get this ground. So cocktail across. Makes sense. See how much they've enjoyed across the two maps making use of the Azami, and I imagine that will remain a thing throughout the whole competition as well. One of those operators that we speak about a lot on the defensive side being incredibly difficult to deal with right now in the combination of, you know, people talk about like Solus, Fenrir, and Azami, but some teams are even saying, you know, Valkyrie should really be in that conversation as well, alongside Tubera, of course, that we often see. Uh, well, not so much banned away yet, but expect we will across the tournament. I know it was banned in the game that's going on on the A stream back on Clubhouse. But I think with that combo, seeing Fenrir, Valkyrie, and his army on side, it just feels horrible to deal with, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just so oppressive. You know, yeah. everywhere you go, you're either going to be on a cam or you're going to get stuck in an F night or... Um, you know, it's so, so difficult trying to peek into Kiba barricades, which Mowgli is using perfectly. Manages to sell, pick himself up a nice entry once Damn again, man. this time onto Fultz. Deadshot, good use of the Nitro to pick up Forest. Five versus three, and SSG again struggling to just get inside of the map. Dare I say, <laughs> Fresh will love this one, split theory. There's a lot trying to happen all at once across the map here for SSG, really, like... Outside of that fight there at the very end, I've not seen a two versus one or anyone even being in close proximity for a trade across the entire round. They've tried to take four or five different points of the map all at once and lost their ones. And when things are going like this, really that's the kind of time you're turning around and saying, this is actually a time for us to group up as a two or a three and at least try and force a trade because it is not working right now. They've just had the timeout. It's still not going their way. Walls are up four on one. It is almost, Tim, a perfect mirror of what we saw back on club. I nearly fell over that desk. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I tried to roll it. It didn't roll. Uh, it's not exactly a small chair, Tim. No, I know that. It's not like a, a one-wheel thing. It's got, you know, six wheels to keep it grounded. There we go. It's moving again. I've, I've unstuck it. How have you managed that? I think it's the car. <laughs> <gasps> oh, we, we, could have had an incident. we could have had an incident, but we didn't. We avoided it. So, um, Wolves are absolutely running away with things on cafe here is the reality. SSG just not at the races at the minute. Unable to get themselves inside the map. Um, unable to get any real, you know, sort of control of anything. Um, not really able to play their game. I think they're going to be desperate to just get out of this half and get onto defence, to be honest. You know, so, I mean, defence seems to be the successful one of the day, doesn't it? Because attackers not look clean for either team. I think we had two attacking round wins from SSG back on map one. We have one from Wolves, so three in total across 12 rounds, 25%. Here we've seen one across five, 20%. It's looking like Fresh might actually be right about win rates. Could well be. <laughs> Could well be. Attackers early doors, yeah. Early doors. It is, it is. Um, it is. A lot you know, we've got to remember um, oh a lot of these teams are going to be coming in and finding out about each other as they go. So, you know, as we go through the tournament, we may well see those adaptations. We may as well see things change um, a little bit. And they'll just look to, uh, you know, what teams have done and how can we take advantage of that and how can we play into it. So we may well see it change as the days go by. But for the time being, of course, so um, yes, it is absolutely looking 
defender favoured at the minute from what we have seen, at least. Deadshot, that's smart. Takes out the drone. So a P4, they've now no idea. They know that Deadshot was off to the right because the drone will have seen him. But they may well not have a clue that he's waiting here to spring out of this main door. Will he just keep being the rat? He's even got Bibbo off towards the other I side think he's left, well. he's left. I think uh, he's left. Like it. I've already remarked on it, but I think maybe it's... Um, both teams have enjoyed this aggression in the early round, at least holding large parts of the map. We remarked on it from SSG back on the first half of Clubhouse. So seeing it here from Wolves as well, they are making the other team fight tooth and nail for every inch of the map, despite having so many strong defensive tools on side. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you know, that's been one of the big things for SSG is... Um, I can't think of any point, really, other than that one round that they've won on the top floor where they've realistically looked like, I've thought, right, they're going to execute in a second. Yeah. Not, they, it just, they haven't got near. They haven't got into a position where they could really think about, right, are we going to put this diffuser down? Um, we're seeing good use of the clutch drone there, just going in, taking over utility, claiming it out, going to look to get that FNAT um, that has just been pinged out as well. It still remains um, such a horrible word, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> clutch. Um, the, the, the drones can only hack so many items, um, so that's why the second one has been sent in just to try and grab that one. Will be successful, um, so that is the FNAT taken over. So not only will that now not affect the attackers, it will actually affect the defenders. It swings that utility's allegiance. Um, so now if any defenders move through that FNAT, they will have that sort of uh, that near sight vision that comes in. So we're talking about like a, a non-living object saying it swings its allegiance. Yeah. So just a kind of device goes, hmm, today I just fire fancy disrupting the attackers today. Maybe the defenders today, I don't know. Very Feels like it's an alignment <laughs> thing. Go on, I love it. That's a funny word, allegiance, yeah. Allegiance. For a, a non-living object. Made me laugh. Anyway, almost in March. Great camera Sorry, up here yeah. as well, positioned in. Seeing absolutely everything going on up here. We spoke about this when teams aren't bringing along the IQ because she's not really someone you plan to bring in a lineup. So you kind of have to sacrifice something quite crucial to you on the attacking side in quite a defender stack meta. And you just think sometimes it's worth bringing it. Just carry on. And Jane Arno runs in, gets one, instantly traded out by Deadshot, who equally takes some pretty nasty shots back onto his side. Wasn't the kill shot from the other side, but straight in towards sight. Forrest has full sent it in here, Tim. There's still four players left alive. I don't think they were aware about a player being in behind, but Forrest has got it all to do. Manages to get himself one, downs the other, but Deadshot was there through prep for the clean. It's going to be a 5 1 half for Walls, Tim. Again, an exact mirror of what we saw back on club. Yeah, a real response from them. Um, and I, I love what I've seen from them on Cafe. They've looked much better than they did on Clubhouse. They've been in complete command and control of this map, to be honest. Um, SSG, again, you know, you, you use the term there, oh, he's just had to full send it into sight, you know. And it feels like that's what SSG are being limited to. It's like, what opportunity have we got? Right, just, uh, just right, I might have a chance to get in here and make something happen inside of sight. But no, Wolves are there. They're ready for it. Um, you know, and they cut him down, and it's another easy round for them. Like, you're the man, you're the man. I think this could be a much quicker map, honestly, than the last one that we saw. I'm not sure whether SSG uh, are going to be able to come back on the defence. Uh, Tim, you know what I say. Let me get to the end of round six. Every time. Two hours for the game of Siege. Saw it back on club. That thought was going to be a fast one as well, but it turned out not to be. 7-5. Every single round of regulation was required. I don't know. I'd like to see Walls kind of drag it over so we get to that third map. I'd love to see a, a full three-map series in our first cast of the whole competition. Hopefully, though, we see those concerns that we had from Clubhouse that hopefully were addressed by Coach Leland in between the break and with Helby on side as well. And said, look, Mowgli, let's not see you charging too far ahead this time around because yet again, you've got quite a slow lineup coming out from Wolsey. You've got that Flores inside. You've got the nobody wants to get the air jabs down. You've no doubt got the Habana who needs to get things opened up. So the last thing you really want is Iana to just go charging off into Narnia here and get picked off with no response from the other side. What the hell is I love it. Big risk for a drone, I'll be honest. Um, you know, getting right out of there. There wasn't anybody in a position to do anything about it. Um, but oh, Forrest, I tell you what, that's a nice little bit there. Out goes the Nitro. Going to be unsuccessful as Mowgli's fast feet moves him away from danger. And they're going to be aware now, I think, that Forrest was playing aggressively on that door. Just dipped himself back inside of reading. Oh, but it's going to be hot and cold to open things up with the first kill onto P4. They absolutely love this level of aggression. Hot and Cold has always got some kind of run out or early round aggression that he likes to try. You've seen it from Forrest, admittedly for the drones and the cheeky C4 coming out, but again, both teams making sure the other side has to fight tooth and nail for every single inch of the map. And I love to see it. Rather than being more passive and sitting back, make him work for it. You've got rid of the Nomad. That opens you up for the rest of this round now to be able to get aggressive on the flanks if you want to, because otherwise they've got to rely pretty much entirely on drones of which only three are out on the map. 
Tank is going to be getting himself onto the repel. He's going to have auto utility sent in to try and dislodge Ashen here. Um, Ashen just being peppered from underneath as well by the looks of things. A few bullets raining up. Forrest is tight on that door, though, to make it difficult for anybody to push directly underneath the site. He's not reading the site. He's train um, on the opposite side of the floor. So just, again, trying to prevent Wolves. And they're having the same problem that SSG did, really. They're not inside of the map. There's, they're still playing from doorways. They're still playing from windows. Windows, they still don't have any map control. Well, they see the barrel first. Mowgli playing it so patiently here as well. Again, it's just the big thing we were looking for was do we see a little bit of unneeded aggression at a certain point? As Bibi goes in, the shot will get the trade. It's at least something for them. And Mowgli realizes he's been stung out by one of those fears coming out from Fenrir. He's back away at least for a second. Still, number disadvantage though for the French side. Deadshot 8 and 4, uh, picking up some important trades over the last mm. couple of rounds. Um, so continuing to go well on Cafe Fultz. Just holding that tight angle on White Stairs. Again, just making it difficult. Yes, Wolves have got themselves inside the map now, but they're struggling to make any real progress. And they haven't dislodged any of the SSG defenders, really. Fultz just takes a little pot shot as he moves away. He's just relocating, going to change his angle so he can watch the drop because he knows likely where something's going to have to come from. Mm. It's going to be all guns up play here as well. Barely any drones left on side. Dead shot into a second. Mowgli starts his move. Actually, that's cleared up for Mowgli to move through Tillis here as well. So actually, despite 15 seconds being on the clock, they could make this work, but they've got to be so careful of the verticals. Need to get into a position to put that diffuser down, and that's going to make life very difficult as J9O picks up Shinka Fultz with a double. And that's going to be the round going for SSG. First successful defence for them. And we're seeing an exact mirror of what we had back on Clubhouse. This time it's SSG 5-1 down at the half. Take the first defence. And we'll be looking to string a few together. Yeah, like I say, this is what I'm always so wary of. Two halves to a game of Siege. Things can change so much when the sides swap halves or swap places. And you see the attackers move on to the defence and vice versa. Oh, we go then to that top floor, Tim. This is where SSG did see success on their attacking half earlier on, at least to start things off. Obviously, it transpired that would be the only success that they would really be able to walk away with. Wolves going to need something pretty spicy in mind to crack this one open. And I mentioned it coming into the map. Both teams, it's not a high preference map for them. But if Wolves are picking this out because they believe from the six games that they have seen SSG play this over the last six months, they figured something out and they can unravel the puzzle in a way and really make SSG suffer. This is the time to do it going to be the top floor as your favorite commented on the top floor already and it was lost Wolves tried to hold on to it ssg are going to take us there five seconds with reading open and with kitchen open i don't know they need these rounds they can't let wolves get on to map point it's a big risk because if they do let Wolves get onto map point now, they could win the other three sites and still potentially, you know, they're having to use them weak sites, um, you know, that they may be not comfortable with because they're going to have to go through a full rotation. Um, so for me, I don't know. We'll see if Wolves are able to crack the nut quite as easily as SSG did. Uh, for now, it's going to be up to the rooftop, grab that intel, see what's going on inside a site. And then I would imagine it's going to be a push towards Piano. We've got Bebo and Zafia already over there on the windows um, looking to pressure. The sheer fact that you have those three ops, the Rooney, the Castle and the Azami, you just know that it's going to be a hold around that piano area. Exactly the same as Wolves did, as you say, right? So it's that's really going to be why you've got the Zofia on side. An operator that we very rarely see these days, it's worth remarking. I think one of the lowest pick rates that we see in comp at the moment, outside of the real outside operator picks, that you just don't really get things like Kavera, maybe once in a blue moon you see it picked up. I know it's on Fresh's bingo card yet again that we'll get an interrogation at some stage. When it will happen, no we'll one knows. We love a tournament interrogation. We love an interrogation because we all get to scream it. And now we're here in Brazil. It feels even more for that. Here we go, though. It's going to be a straight execution. I'm just going to say, surely not inside about 15 seconds. They want to force some of the SSG players to move. And P4 has just marched his way in. They've used the smoke as a bit of a distraction. He's got two kills inside a cocktail and it's going in for the plan. They've got cover on the top. Ashen swings round but doesn't find his man. In fact, that's a lot. P4 goes down, not out, but it means the diffuser will not get stuck. So now it's a little bit of stalemate. We're going to have to see Wolves retake that ground once again. And Forrest just runs straight into Mowgli, who has been hugging Snowdor across a lot of this half so far. And sure enough, strikes well and true. Jane, I know. But it all to do against three players who are still on their feet. And their situation for J9 oh here. They know that he's in bar back storage. Right? He's up shots from east. Um, no, they're going to be able to pick the man up. No, try to, but... 
You know, with the cover coming in from Skylark, there's no way that J9 O can do anything. And just exactly what I was concerned about from an SSG perspective, but fantastic for Wolves. They've stepped up, got the attack onto a site that is not always that much in favour of the defenders, and that gives them the map point opportunity. It does, and it feels like, okay, yep, this one could go over the edge here if they need it to. That top four, again, has been the one that we've seen both teams have a lot of success at just a very quick execute into the top four when they've kind of said right now it's go time and they just go it was really orchestrated i thought at least by the top four it was shinker up here and this is the closing kill that you saw come out but he was the reason why no one could play inside a bar the reason why the players inside a piano could do nothing because he smoked it off and why no one could push the diffuser going down inside of cocktail it took ashen to swing and trade his life knowing that there was a very good chance there was someone on east window who would take him out as a result but again shinker for me perfect place perfect time perfect gadgetry on the capital enabled absolutely everything in that round it, off the back of course of e4 walking a brilliant 2k inside a cocktail yeah, he just saw his opportunity. Saw his opportunity, and, you know, if you're going to give me the space, I'm going to take it. Um, and it just shows the difference that we've had in the attacking rounds that have been won, the attacking rounds that have been lost. Attacking rounds that have been won, the attackers have been able to get inside the map, get themselves established, work their way through. P4 there, took the opportunity. A little bit of space was given, in he goes. The ones where the defenders have been particularly successful is where they haven't given that space, where they've kept them, you know, on the outskirts, on the margins of the map, and not allowed them to get in and get any control. So... Are SSG now able to do the same? They're going to mix up the sites. They don't want any more of that top floor. Do not. Understandably so. It's a, it's a tough one to defend. And imagine if we get this far into the map, you'll also see them rotate away to playing mining instead. Going up onto that top floor as neither team has had a lot of success. A good jump out from Ashen. Finds Mowgli, who we've already commented on. He's been having a brilliant map so far. Him and Deadshot. Really in sync this map, both on double digits in terms of kills, but you've taken down the raid boss from the first half. Yeah, really well played there from Ashen, just took his opportunity well. Nice advantage now for SSG, and it's just going to make that job that I spoke about even more difficult for Wolves. They're playing onto a kitchen site, so they want to get mid-floor control, because otherwise they're going to have defenders above them, especially now in a five versus four, um, because SSG have got the numbers to allow them to keep players upstairs. Um, they will try and keep hold of vertical angles, particularly to deal with areas like prep. Um, you can open up angles from train that are going to give you a nice view down in there, and it just prevents the attackers moving on into side. So Wolves are going to need to deal with that. Oh, hot and cold, almost being decapitated there. Sat in behind the bakery, bakery bar. Swing from Vaults onto Deadshot coming down brown stairs. A little bit isolated, admittedly. No one there with him again. Really looking to get a backstab on the go. Simply will not be able to capitalize. This will probably be a slow burn round towards SSG win. Spoke about it back on map one. Their discipline in these man advantage situations is absolutely sublime. Hot and cold's probably dead though. Absolutely. Uh, P4 is going to go away nope. somehow. Hot and cold manages to stick his position. He was flashed out, but waits for the effects to wear off. Springs up and manages to get one kill. Bibu has to dip away after he can't find his man. He's low health as well. Um, and as you say, five versus two now. SSG just waiting for time to pass as the round is almost certainly there. It's hot and cold from what looked like a very difficult position to hold on to. Has managed to find himself two. He's got himself back to the safety of the counter. And it's going to be Ashen who's on the cover for him from the bottom of red stairs. Picks up that final kill onto Shinka. And that is going to be a round for SSG 6-3. But they still need another three in a row. Never really challenged in that round, SSG. Just very comfortably moving quite smoothly, whether it was hanging around bakery, whether it was moving in towards restaurant and bar, round white, up red, down red, you name it. Never any real pressure coming out from walls, and that'll be around they'll sooner forget and just put them in the back of their minds. Just being this next round, we're stepping across into fireplace and reading. The second floor site that we spoke about before as we've now finished that first air quotes quarter of this second half, the third quarter of the game. So you'll get the same three sites rotated through again, but again, Tim, don't suspect we'll see Bar and Cocktail. I would expect them to do as Wolves did and move across instead, playing off towards mining. Yes, exactly that. I think, uh, you know, given the way that both of the attacks on the top lower have gone so far, um, it would be the smart choice. Uh, but we will see if Wolves can get themselves into that top lower. I, I really want to see it because it's something that SSG didn't ever really manage to do, um, was get top floor control, start working vertical angles um, and see what happens. Now I'm looking across at the side of Wolves. We've got an Amaru with P4. We've got a Blitz with Deadshot. It screams to me, let's get that top floor taken. Let's get in there, get a kill or two, use those verticals. I want to see how the defenders stack up, in this case SSG, in reading once that top floor is lost. It's always the big one. 
Just looking at the explosive comp they've got, though. And I just feel there could be something real special cooking from Wolves here. They want this done and dusted. They don't want to find us running down to the wire, as we saw back on club, requiring all 12 rounds. For them, 10 rounds sounds enough. They want it done. Looking at that Amaru, in towards the KB, in towards the, their Blitz. Just everything screams. Uh, okay, I mean, that screams as well. You jump out of a window, you fall to your death, uh, and then you die. Mm. Um, Ashen with a very good jump out in the last round. Forrest with not such a good jump out in this round. However, Mowgli ah. does leave himself a little bit exposed there. And it's Ashen once again who manages to get that kill. We picked up on him before the game even started. And, you know, he was such a big player for SSG in Atlanta. They really need him leading from the front. And he's really starting to do that here on Cafe. Hmm. Mozzie loses the C4 as a result of going down, but in return you take out the Decabi and the calls. I'd still probably take it as a win overall in that sort of one-for-one -one early round debacle between the two teams. Decabi is so valuable when you're trying to run him, especially when you know you've got the Echo on side as well, because now, of course, you, you're forced off of the cameras. You cannot sit on them whilst your phone is ringing. So that really means there's no Denard of the Plank coming in as long as that call is going through. Without that on side here, it could sting a little bit, but you still have the Amaru, and that's exactly where P4 is going in. Charging force along with the shield, charging in, what? still wins out. Fultz gets his man. P4 gets one back on the other side. There is one for one between the two teams. Oh, ho, ho, a great swing into a bit of a self-flash, but it's a three versus two for Wolves with a minute and 20 to play. Surely, Tim, they can do it. The flashes just mean nothing. This round kills raining in regardless. Shinka knows the man is there. Doesn't know exactly where though. Raise. Fultz will be traded. P4 once again in there to do the damage. <laughs> Two versus one. A minute left on the clock. P4 has the diffuser in hand as well. So everything that Wolves need to get this closed out. And 7-3 would be a real result for them here on Cafe. But Hot and Cold is waiting. He knows exactly where they are. He's going to play a little ring around the roses oh, with no. The one versus one. Can he close this out for the first complete clutch that we will see in this matchup? He just needs to find one more, but he's up against a full health Bibu. He is Bibu, those one and six. He's not been having the best joy in this map when it comes round to his gunfights. And hot on cold spots if he knows that he's sat inside a reading. Going in for the plant as well. He'll be able to disrupt this. Surely you don't play running around the roses with the Yokai drones. It's never going to be a winning scenario. Bibu's really got to try and find his man, but I think he's left it out too late here, Tim. I think he's actually going to lose that to the Hokai drones. Oh, no. Just needs to find that drone. He couldn't see where it was. That's now the case. He's going to have to stick this, though. He's unlikely to have time to come off for a fight. Hot and cold just looking for the angle. Is he going to allow this to go down? He's allowed Bibu to get his gun back in his hand. All of a sudden, it's 50-50 again, Des. Where does he go? Does he wrap around the back? Try and go through the rotation or wrap around through the door? It's left, right, left, right. Oh, and he gets the long range bump. Down goes Bibu and hot and cold keeps his team in map two. It's surely going to be kicking themselves after that two versus one. It's always difficult when you've got an echo on the board because you can see firsthand how much time can be wasted by those Yokai drones. The information as well to know exactly where Bibu was. Even when the plant was going down, I know where I'm going to have to challenge. So hot and cold. He can be thinking ahead of time. How am I going to play this 1v1 if I have to take the gunfight? Where's my angles? What am I going to do? You can see how well prepared he was for it. Hot and cold, a player with just an absolute wealth of experience and it just goes to show there plays it beautifully the thing is Bibu's the same he's been playing for years and years and you'd really think in that situation either there's a team commitment to we're going for the gunfight here go kill go kill or they go for the execute and instead you've got one player pushing him for a gunfight Bibu kind of drawn back a little bit doesn't go too aggressive kind of almost doubts himself I think in a way and he pays the price for it fundamentally getting stuck in a 1v1 against an echo who's dancing around you for fun Makes it all too easy for hot and cold, even if it did come down to that closing 1v1 with the diffuser down. Six and four then, Tim, it does feel like we're going to potentially see every single round. We could well do. Um, you know, and we've got to remind people at home, of course, of what the stakes are here. It is currently 1-0. This is a best of three between SSG and Wolves, and it is 1-0 in maps to SSG having one clubhouse. If they were able to turn a result over here on Cafe, they will take the win. And believe me, when we're talking about SI group stages, 
I say it every year. I just love the chaos because things go wrong and things go right for teams very, very quickly. Uh, we only lose one team from each group, so the reality is a couple of wins over your four matches is likely to be enough mathematically to take you through into the next stages. Of course, you want to get as high up the groups as you can because you're getting an advantage going into the upper bracket, for example. But it can also fall apart quickly. A couple of losses can be very, very difficult to come back from. You then find a lot of pressure on those final games that you're going to be going you know, into. And so it's not easy. And this well could be um, you know, a win for SSG. If they can get the couple of rounds back, get themselves into overtime, who knows what happens? I love how hot and cold is only one of the chillest, like, calmest guys you'll ever meet in, in Pro Siege. Like, you meet him, you see him around, he's nice, quite chill, quite unassuming. And there he was just proper going for it. Blasting the boost. Oh, where his body was at the very least. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, if an Ashley's streaming at you every single round, it's definitely going to get in the bloodstream as well. You'll be feeling it yourself and seeing them all get hyped up. I absolutely love it. It's that kind of passion that I love seeing at these live events. That's not going to be sending in the Rotero drones to begin with then. Going to take out a default camera with that one. Not a use that we see too often. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but time. if you can get them far enough up the wall, they will do the job. The splash damage will take out the cam. Um, so also feeds a little bit of information, tells them that there's no danger from bottom white, from VIP, for example, bottom brown. Um, and it's sort of a, a two for one. Now then, people it's going to be working on that castle barricade. You see him dipping away because you've got to be particularly cautious for nitros on the back of those. Um, you know, teams will count. They'll know as and when that window is about to go. Um, and they'll sometimes be a nitro to follow. Um, not on the side of cover. SSG to be able to do that this time, but still the thought process for Bibu. They don't necessarily know that five versus three though. As SSG continue fighting, they seem to have found their legs here, Des. They managed to get three in a row. It's five versus two and the rush that Wolves hoped would push them over the line has fallen. It's faltered. It's been unsuccessful. Not looking great, is it? Right, anything is smoking off like fireplace and the rotation that led out towards the hallway that you can see here on the right hand side of your screen, but just didn't really have any cover in the side of the site itself, or were they aware by the sounds of it, the rotation to the right-hand side of the fireplace that gave Hot and Cold that wonderful free angle. It didn't matter what they wanted to do with the Amaru. Always going to get seen out there. And this is probably again going to be a slow bleed down, which does mean, Tim, we'll have to see all 12 rounds to see this one closed out. It certainly looks like it could be the case. Um, if not, it could be an exact mirror, really, of what we saw on Clubhouse. Um, which was a 7-5 win for SSG after they had a 5-1 half. This well could be a 5-1 half for Wolves and then a 7-5 win if they're able to get this last round over the line. But it's certainly not looking great at the minute. SSG just finding themselves on defence here um, and just... The rounds seem to have got easier for them over the last couple of rounds. Like we saw that one there, they were just so ready for that rush. Um, mm. The Wolves never really stood a chance, and SSG really did punish them quickly for it. Wolves had the right idea, though. I spoke coming into the map about how you don't come to this map knowing it's one of your least preferred maps unless you have something prepped counterwise towards SSG. And sure, on the defense, as we said, both teams look great on the defensive side, but the attacking side, it's still well, lacking for either daggers. team. We've only seen success on Bar and Cocktail, and Tim, that only is going to make you feel even happier. As you're seeing now, why defenders more than ever should not be going to that top floor. The only side that's been lost. Oh, it's as if I said that defenders don't see much success. Um, right, we're going to head down to Kitchen then for our final defensive round here. And honestly, I think this is a site that maybe is going to suit them here. Um, you know, as we've said, Wolves struggling to get inside the map. He struggled last time, hot and cold, held on to Bakery fantastically well. Um, getting himself a couple of kills, even after it seemed like it probably wouldn't be the case. Um, and we just saw Wolves again struggling to get that toe hold inside of the map. So for me, if I'm SSG, I'm leaning into that. No surprise to see the Azami brought along, the Fenrir brought along. Just those operators, they're going to make it difficult again for Wolves to establish themselves. Love to bring in the introduction of the Ossa here as well for Shinka. The diffuser in hand, no doubt this is the sort of thing that you see turn into a execute through freezer. Get planted just inside a site right next to the actual bomb chassis itself and you get the diffuser down. But first and foremost, it's one of those classic things where there's a checklist to work through here. Mowgli and P4 have got to do some work on the upstairs. That will be the first port of call. You've got Ram on side, you've got the Buck on side. It's all about vertical destruction with Bibo on side being able to burn through some of those ADS and magnets or equally to take out things at range. If there was a shield on side, for example, which there is with hot and cold, or to get rid of some of those Kiba barriers if they are impeding the team from moving forwards. 
Bibu then gets himself into the top block. Going to start working his way across. Information will be there, but just being cautious, of course. Um, always possible to miss somebody on a draw, and always possible for somebody to sneak back into a location that has already been drawn. But this is good. Well ahead of time, P4 is able to start getting those um, floors opened up. He's gone for the one just at the midpoint of red stairs there that's going to give the view down towards bottom of red. Um, that's going to give access in towards wedding, towards bakery, prevent the flank. Um, we've got then Mowgli on the book just opening things up inside a site, taking utility out as well. Freezer hatch is open. This is way better from Wolves versus the last time we saw them attack a kitchen. So far, so good. Good start to the round. It's like that first 90 seconds, as you say, but all really going to come down to the execute, I think, and how they can make this work because they're going to have to force a couple of players of SSG to move away if they're going to make this work. They've got both sides opened up as well, so they do need to rotate and take over a push down red rather than through Freezer. It's there as an option, but the main person to follow is Shinka. He's the one with the diffuser. He's the one who's on the Osa Shield. Wherever he goes is going to be where the execute gets centered, and so far, it looks like, again, looks like it's going to be the Freezer side. Just the vertical use of those Kiba barricades. Not something that we see too often, um, but can be used, of course, on any surface. So when those verticals start getting opened up, they can be placed above just to provide a little bit of security, a little bit of safety. 40 seconds left to go. Wolves have not been able to pick up a kill yet, and that could be problematic for them because SSG are poised here for a retake. Oh, They're poised Fultz. to move back onto site. Right. Now then, that was great from Fultz to get up above and to create a problem for that attack inside, but mm. the trade was there immediately. It's going to be messy. They need that vertical cover as well. Forest Force back. You can hear the decay be ringing out here as well. Again, everything Wolves have brought along has been engineered for this moment. But it's all coming down to the last 15, Tim. That means no second chances. <laughs> That's it. They really need to clear out VIP. J9 all manages to get Bibu. Mowgli gets the trade. And it's going in favour of Wolves at the minute. But with four seconds left to go, they've just no! got to make a move. Two quick kills come in from Forest and Dez. We're going to overtime. I've been waiting for those words for months, Tim. Tell you what, defense is having an absolute field day in this series, as many would expect. And I don't know, neither team able to get the business done on the attack. The thing is, I think if you give Wolves another 60 seconds there, they probably put up a pretty good attack. I but mean, you could always say that. If you give Wolves another eight minutes on that attack, I think they might get it done. Like, no, because they're still 5v5, because they've massaged players away from where they were playing. Yes. You know, they've, just, they've, it took them forced, too long. They've made room in their force SSG back, but then... Let them back in. They've got back in behind sinks, for example. J9 know is still inside Bunker. So while they've kind of given themselves a bit of breathing room in Freezer itself, nothing actually inside of the site. It was all going right until they actually said the word go. And that's when everything started to fall apart. SSG start on the defensive side, Tim, and suddenly I'm thinking this might actually be an SSG map win, a 2-0 for them. Wolves had to win it in regulation. Well, it's a massive advantage for them. It's 5-1 halves. Um, the defenders have been winning 5-1. As we've said, they've uh, you know, been able to choke out the attacks. They've been able to burn so much time. They've been able to make it really, really difficult for um, Wolves to get through to them. But the same for SSG when they've been on attack. But, um, yeah, absolutely. You'd say for the first time on Cafe, really, that this puts SSG in the driving seat. They've been fighting from behind previously. Hot and cold going for that. The bit of me is just like, oh, oh, calm down. You don't want to lose that man early if you want to complete this comeback. And that's exactly what they're going to be looking to do. They don't want to give any early advantage to Wolves. But what he has done now, Hot and Cold, is let them know there's somebody on the bottom floor. They've got to worry about the entire map. They've got to go in and think about clearing it out. I think this series really has been... The pace and the outcomes have largely been dictated by Wolves. And that's not to say they've always been in control of the game, but I wouldn't say SSG to me have made, like, grave errors time and time again, like we've seen Wolves do. Equally, I wouldn't really say overall we've seen them have massive high moments where they're just completely clear of Wolves because a lot of that has come as a result of Wolves falling short or just being completely missync with one another. And I just feel that with how things keep on playing out, with how Wolves keep on letting rounds slip away, there is enough composure on SSG's side to get this one over the finish line, even if... Mowgli and Deadshot are having two of the best matches in the play in. Not going to play much lately, but a long time, Tim. Pressure is really mounting on Ashen here, but he is soaking it up like a sponge. And look at that! He takes down one, and he gets a second on the jump out! That is a huge play from Ashen! He was pressured from every which way inside a cocktail. There were flashes, there were drones, there was utility, but he got himself a double out of nowhere. However, Wolves, they've come back into it, Des, and this has got to be a freebie. Ashen, he's smart. <laughs> he gets himself away from danger. What a play! And he's still got away with it as well. Snowdor wasn't available. So he goes, all right, guys, I'll just go down another floor. It's no problem to me. 
Because every player was on the upstairs. Oh, Pete Ball looks slightly the wrong way. Leaves that angle with his crosshair. Half a second too soon and pays the price. The march on Ford continues. One more goes down to Red Stairs. Dead shot knows a player inside a train. I imagine he does. Does he see his man? I think he knows he's there. But he's got to find the angle. We'll just about get it. But he's still got Ashen and Hot and Cold to go through with 60 seconds to play, Tim. Is it? It's all on Deadshot's shoulders at the minute. 12 8 he is in terms of kills and deaths. He's had a pretty good game overall on Cafe, but this could just be an ask too far. Ashen, super low health. It's be a breath away from death, realistically. Not if Deadshot can even bro. graze him, he'll get the job done. But he's got the second man, and it's hot and cold. And he's got drones, there's He can feed that information in. They know exactly. The red ping is there. They've got everything they need. And surely it's a matter of time until SSG close this one out. Oh, gets the one. Can he find the next as well? What a clutch this would be. And a pivotal one because they're on the attack inside, Tim. He's going to try and stick it. Hot and cold has been in a 1v1 already. Wants this map against Bibu. And Deadshot pulls it off. That is what you need to win this map. An attacking round win. And SSG are going to be distraught. They've let that one slip, Tib. They really will. At the point when Ashen goes out of that window, gets the two kills, you're five versus three. You're thinking, SSG have done this. They're getting the momentum. And then Wolves, they scrap back into it. But once again, SSG find themselves two versus one then. And the advantage. But dead shot. Takes it on his shoulders and single-handedly scraps his way back in. Two great gunfights that he wins there. Yes, Ashen was low health, but it is worth pointing out that the kill onto Ashen was a headshot. He wins that fight whether Ashen is low health or not. You've got to remember that. So a great play from Deadshot there to win the 1v2 when Wolves needed it most. Just absolutely. It was a 1v3 as well. Let's not forget because he got the player in train as well, I guess. Yeah, and turned it from there. But yeah. Just bonkers. I mean, Deadshot's a player that has had uh, a difficult year. Obviously, relatively new to the team as well. And we haven't seen him flourish the way that many would have hoped. But if they look back at this later in the tournament and say, that 1v3 from Deadshot kept us in cafe. We went on to win consulate and therefore take the win over SSG. It gave us a seed against a different team or even potentially avoid elimination. Something's guaranteed here at SI. That could be the moment they look back on and say, not quite safe for the tournament, but really got them further than maybe they expected to. What a start. See Deadshot's feeling himself now, getting himself up to the windows. Have a little look, see if he can continue that aggression. But at 14 and 8, you wouldn't deny him the opportunity. It's gone well for him so far. Back on the mozzie that we saw him playing earlier as well. So SSG it is now or never if they want to win this 2 0. Otherwise, they'll find themselves going to that third map. Let's not forget, Deadshot started this map 0 and 3 as well. Yeah. Remember, he got those two kills. You're like, oh, finally, he's arrived in the game in round four. He's only gone from strength to strength throughout the map. Yes, Mowgli's got quieter. He was the defense hero for the side of Wolves, but really Deadshot has been the difference maker to keep the minute in the second half. Now we're back on that defensive side, though. Mowgli's the one you'd expect to awaken and really start doing some damage again. Running will continue from SSG just briefly. J9 all concerned about the bottom of white stairs. Now then, Drone is going to be captured by Deadshot, but don't think he's going to be rushing to take a peek out of that white door because, of course, having lost the drone, if anybody's checking them on the side of SSG, they're going to call that out. They're going to know that there's a presence at the bottom of white stairs. No, there's one planting his feet with the pea shooter, that MPX at distance. Not really great damage, but when you can hit headshots like Mowgli can, who really cares? They're going to be the starting focus. As you said, Tim, they've got to work their way across top and then get down a floor onto the actual sites itself. So far, wall's quite well spread. You can see the outlines as well as where people's playing around train. Quite isolated as individuals, at least for now. We don't know that. And half of the round has gone, Tim. P4 knows that he's been drawn out. He tries to take out the utility, but doesn't want to overexpose himself. Um, SSG have got Hot and Cold just sneaking through the ground level at this point. He could well move up round stairs. If he does, he's going to be in trouble, so needs to be just cautious of that. Um, but SSG now getting themselves locked into that top four. Look at this. The hunt is on. He's looking for Deadshot. He knows he's above him on white stairs. I don't think Deadshot's aware of the Nox presence. If he comes Real around man. the corner here, he's going to lose his life, Bob. surely. Yes, I think he's just picked up on some sound there. Oh, there's the barbed wire. Perfectly placed. That's going to keep Deadshot alive. But Forrest, C4, he manages C4. to find Mowgli. Great. C4 comes out and Deadshot turns down. He's feeling it, Tim. Finds a second kill in the round. And now once again, Wolves are back on a numbers advantage. Even Bibu's getting involved, Tim. They've pulled the two rounds over. SSG will be kicking themselves for that round 13. But Wolves take us into map three.
a great performance from Wolves in overtime there and you've got to say it was on the back of a couple of dead shot plays particularly that first clutch that he managed to pull off on the attack we knew that it was the attacking win that would get this over the line if anything was going to and that was exactly what they needed and when dead shot it was a great finish from him and again at the end the nitro onto the dining window just everything kind of going right for him 17 kills, I think, at the end there. Both teams had uh, three players on double-digit kills, and for a game that's going to 14 rounds, yeah, you come to expect that. But I spoke about it during the game as well. I think for Wolves, you're seeing the kind of, like, peaks and troughs yeah. be far greater than SSG. You so far are a little bit like this down the middle. There's not a lot of spikiness in their play, not a lot of, kind of, like, bounce to it. I think they really knew if they're going to be able to capitalize on Wolves. Admittedly, not their map pick. A map they're not had a great record on. It only gets worse now. Two wins in the last seven games on it. Consulate, though, I don't even know what to expect. That's going to be crazy. Absolute carnage. All bets are off at this point because, like you say, they've both had um, a map where they've come in and looked pretty dominant. And it's going to come down to that new one to decide it all. Oh, can't wait to see. Well, guess what that means? Great time when we come back. On See you in a few. City of Atlanta is a place that has something for everybody. It's very urban, but it's also very natural. We've got some of the best teams in the world finally here in Atlanta, ready to show their stuff. So we are in for an amazing weekend. I love Siege. My little brother was super hype on it. And I finally tried it out and was like, yeah, I see what this is about. Any team I neighbor going DZ, SSG, the whole way, no doubt. There's money on the line. There's glory on the line. And for teams that came in this event on the bubble, well, we'll wait and see if they're able to punch their ticket to Sao Paulo. Player name 
オリンピックに採用されるっていうニュースを見てから自分たち前回ベスト8でコペンハーゲン終わっちゃったので次はベスト4目指して、うん、今日の対戦でもこんな感じがいいな。Salut, c'est Shaiko et je suis entré fragueur pour Team BDS. Ce que j'en pense, c'est que ouais, pour moi, je suis un gars normal qui joue juste aux jeux vidéo, quoi. Mais je le vois aussi quand même qu'il y a pas mal de gens qui me suivent, qui me supportent et tout, et ça fait quand même plaisir. Bah, les objectifs, c'est de bah, déjà d'essayer de, de gagner ce major actuellement à Atlanta. Et le gagner aussi, ça veut dire qu'on se, se qualifie au Six au Brésil. Du coup, ouais, ça serait, ça serait incroyable. Mais il、euh, y a beaucoup de, aussi de, de travail derrière, quoi, du jour.、Euh... Comme j'ai dit avant, c'est genre beaucoup d'entraînement, quoi, c'est tout. C'est. The world champions are here, and their trophy case still has a little more space. G2 is already locked and loaded. And It's now... easy to win one competition, but trying to win more—that's the hard part, you know. I'm Jack Robertson, also known as Doki, and I'm the entry fragger for G2 Esports R6. A new generation pick up where legends left off. I want to keep it going and be classed as the most achieved player in the game. I mean, I guess you could say we have a reputation of being seen as like the, the bad guy. Try to make one round today, Joe. Because every time we play, like we are screaming at the enemy team, just trying to get in their boots. I smell the fear, says Doki. Okay, it's game time. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. Oh, we are the best at psychological warfare. It isn't even a question. G2, are they getting their first dub here in Swiss, or is Scars about to pull off the upset? Oh, Scars! I'm gonna say good luck again to them. He's got another. He's absolutely nuclear to the third. Anyone、oh. else want a lineup? Yo, Scars, you are terrible. This one is a foregone conclusion, I imagine. That's gonna be G2 onto、oh. the seven and one, cruising through their first game here in Swiss. Like we we won the first round in the game and we typed in the game like GG. It's kind of bad manners, I guess, but that's called mental warfare. That's again, that's the win in the game before you even play. Even if you end up losing today, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and the big thing to keep note of is that if you are ever in a best of three situation, that is elimination territory, and you have to win out if you want to qualify for the next phase. Just about that. The only difficult game for G2 is W7. No, no, no. But I think the favorite to to the major is G2. Not you. And me too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, good luck. I'll see you later. Day one of the Swiss stage yesterday. Two top ten teams finished dead last in the league, losing huge games. Hello. Alegria, alegria. Salve, rapaziada. Eu sou Herdes. Sou jogador da W7M. Eu sou entre Fregger. Most people universally have put W7M thinking that they will be the first ever back-to-back -back major champions. Are you gonna pop off on stage today? Pop off? Ah, yes. W7M here in Copenhagen. No one could stop their rampage. Eu não vejo essa sensação de de pesar. Já conquistei uma vez. Eu já sei o caminho. Como eu eu consigo chegar lá? Both teams said that they're going to be fixing what they need to、yeah. be fixed. This is going to be an in-your-face sort of game. I win, you lose. If you win, you get the chain. No, no, no. 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 It's going to be a lot of trash talk. Sit down to just one more. It's going to be a three-three half team. Really hard to call which way it goes. A gente é um time que trabalha muito. 
E eu acho que isso é posto em prática nos campeonatos e tem dado resultado. Estou me sentindo muito feliz com essa vitória. Acho que o time estava precisando aí para... Essa SG é sempre fácil, né? Sempre acho fácil. Esperem a gente na final aí. Vamos embora. Passa vergonha. Passa vergonha na gravação do vídeo. Então vem agora então. Vem aqui agora. Meu nome é Jaime Pereira Ramos Jr., mais conhecido como Cyber dentro do jogo Rainbow Six. Jogo pela Phase Clan. Como que eu poderia fazer? Então deixou eu mais maduro. Fez que vem nessa... Família feliz. Nessa segunda temporada pra tentar de novo ser, ah ser lá, campeão. Ah lá, ah lá, vai correr atrás do papai, oh, que sorriso. Acho que essa parte foi o que me ajudou bastante a, a evoluir Nossa, muito então, dentro do jogo. Ele é um amuleto pra gente, né? Querendo ou não, é, acho que ele me deixa eu mais com, com vontade de querer ganhar. Vou olhar pra ele saber que ele tá ali me assistindo. Acho que estiga mais eu querer dar, dar, tá dando o meu máximo. O Major Suécia, eu quebrei, meu, quebrei o recorde né, de kills que teve em campeonato de Major. E no próximo campeonato que a gente jogou, que foi o Major Berlin, a gente, eu quebrei de novamente meu recorde, mas não fui campeão. Mas eu espero se eu ganhar, conseguir levar ele pro palco e jogar. Welcome back to the stream. If you're just tuning in, because I'm very aware that we've obviously seen the conclusion of G2 versus NIP. Welcome. We're going into map three. We have had a screamer of a series so far. 12 rounds on map one, 14 on map two. Okay, which we just saw the conclusion of. Now we've got Consulate being lined up. Tim, it feels like a very defender-dominated series so far. Not seen too much success for the attackers. But knowing both teams love Consulate, this final map we're going into, will fortunes change? Well, we did have a quick look in the break um, at how these teams have shipped but previously. <laughs> yeah. We would have to say statistically, um, SSG do have, um, I'm going to say, a slight advantage a um, in that area when it comes to playing with consoles, uh, particularly on the previous results. Um, but to be honest with you, the way these two teams have played so far and the way these maps have played out, both have been close and it wouldn't surprise me to see that be exactly the same story on console. They've really been fighting tooth and nail for, for everything and um, I think Deadshot has probably been the biggest surprise uh, so far, particularly that mm. performance on Cafe. 17 kills he finished on a 1v3 clutch on attack um, in, in order to win that one out, basically. It was the attack that was needed for Wolves um, to get them over the line and You see him right up there at the top of the leaderboard, no surprise. Yep, as I mentioned, quite a lot of kills across both teams as well. Three players on either side being into double digits, but really it was Moog on the defensive half and then Deadshot towards the closing half of the game that really made the difference. Deadshot, as you can see, at 17 and 8 is absolutely mega, given he started the game after, after the first three rounds at 0 and 3, Tim. So big showing, but the question we had for each other in the break was, do we see him do that again? Is it a series thing? Is it a map thing? I'm hoping it carries across the console. Because it'd be great to see Wolves come out and do well here. But you mentioned the stats. Since console got reworked, we've seen Wolves play it twice in tier one play. They've lost it both times. SSG have played it four times. They've won it four times. SSG have like a 70, I think 3% round win rate, whereas Wolves are stuck down at like 27% or something. Literally a gulf between them in terms of how well they play on this map. Whether that comes down to competition, the newness of the map, I'm not entirely sure. But both teams love the map, even if their outcomes on it so far have been incredibly different. Yeah, exactly that. And um, it's for Wolves now, really, to show up and, uh, you know, give us a, a reason to believe why it's a map that they like so much. And uh, certainly improve that round win rate a little bit. But uh, we need to keep an eye on Deadshot in this as well, because, of course, you know, he was pretty instrumental in that last win on Cafe. Let's not, uh, you know, make any bones about it. SSG were in a position where they were going to go on and win that. It was a potential 2-0. They got the defense. They had the advantage um, on the defense. But Deadshot stepped up and got it done. So... We need to keep an eye on him, see how his performance continues into this one. It was a little bit slow to start on Cafe. You know, if he finds that coming into console and doesn't really get running, it could then be difficult for Wolves. We'll see how that goes. Or again, Mowgli, very, um, you know, very effective on Cafe, very impactful, getting a lot of kills, turning a couple of rounds. And again, they just need that if Wolves are going to improve that console at win rate. 
Well, Tim, it wouldn't be our opening series of the tournament so far if there were only four rounds that we haven't seen played out. The first ever best of three we ever cast together many years ago was a full 45 round banger. This one we also <laughs> hold the record for the longest competitive tier one match. That's please. true. 68 rounds, was it, of 75 possible? Which is just bonkers, honestly, but here we are. And this one feels like it's going to be potentially another one of those long ones if Continent starts to go towards the, the you know, full 12 or potentially all the way to 15 rounds. SSG starting things out on the ban. They're banning every single map so far in this series, and that is not changing here in map three. Nope, that's it. It's been a consistent one. They have absolutely no interest in playing against the Ying. And uh, we're going to have the Monte mm. come in as well. So the bans have actually started out <laughs> I in exactly I, I swear. the same way as they did. Well, it was the reverse. It was Monte then Ying. SSG only attacked with Monte once on club. And that's since it, then, banned. Wolves are like, that's it. Last two maps, gone. Taken away. Refused to see it. Valkyrie being taken away is an interesting small change. Seen a lot Wolves of Valkyrie play today so far. We so. have. And Wolves have gone very heavily in towards banning Mira, though, across the last two maps. Here, there's going to be the Valkyrie and the Azami going to be the final ban. That is an interesting one, but not wholly unsurprising. Wolves have used it a lot. We've seen Moe running around on it a lot. It's holding down areas of the map. Piano back on uh, Cafe. Prior to that, we saw some really good defenses coming down inside the basement when it was defending downstairs um, for the side of Wolves. I'm not horribly surprised to see it taken away, but it does mean, of course, things like the Solus will be available and straight away SSG across the running map. When it was open back on the first map, I think it was actually only SSG who picked up the Solus. Wolves Attackers didn't touch to it once, as far as I can remember. As bombs as they can. SSG going to kick things off with a top floor hold then. Um, and a captain. We're looking to keep hold upstairs. Now, the interesting area, particularly for top floor, um, is exactly where we're looking at right now. Thank you very much. It's going to be in and around those vending machines, and it is going to be the setup that we would expect. Global shield up by the vending machines. Um, so you would usually have somebody playing down towards the bottom of your screen there, near, near where the compass is, uh, sort of around the top of those stairs, into um, the small area of the side of meeting room. You're going to have somebody in there, and then you're going to have somebody up at the top of that corridor, near the shield, in behind there, behind the vending machine, that's going to help them hold on to that to position. It stops them being pushed from top spiral and it also stops the push coming through from copy at the right hand side of your screen effectively. So it's going to prevent everything, all that pressure coming across from admin unless that area is cleared out and it can be very, very difficult to clear out. So if SSG do put the numbers in there, Wolves are going to have to find an answer. You would expect Wolves to be well aware. Of, you know, it's something that G2 kind of pioneered in that position. Um, so coming from EU, we should be ready and waiting for it should SSG choose to set up. Should, though. It's one of those classic things where the more you see something, the more counters start to be established, the more teams begin to figure it out. And what's the best way to counter a shield? Arguably with another shield, which is why Shinka is bringing along Blitz here. At least the ability to get up there and cause a little bit of chaos could be the one. I want to say those tracks not really in the ideal spot there from Mowgli. But otherwise, that means the other stairs should be locked off, at least for now. Forrest sniffing out this way to feed information back and forth. Beauty playing shields, of course, as you do get to feed this kind of information. And the call is there, they get away with it. And I mentioned the best way to beat a shield is with a shield. Shinka comes straight in with the flash, but can't get rid of the clash. That shot once again coming in and getting things going for Wolves. So as he manages to pick up one P4 and Bibu double down, find them for themselves. Forrest, he picks one up, but three versus one and dead shot there for the trade. And it is again that name that we are shouting. Dead shot with a double in the first round. The Blitz is just hassling Fultz now. He's actually going to do damage to himself Out. with the impact need. Leaves us now all but done as Deadshot picks up that final kill. Finko was down but not out, but Deadshot was there once again to protect his teammate, get the trade, and that's a triple to kick things off. And that's Wolves taking round one, and boy mm. oh boy, have we got a game on. In pretty explosive fashion as well as the key thing I'd note there, it would have been so easy for SSG to just turn Wolves through the meat grinder. You know, when we had the clash at the top of Yellow, just feeding on what was going on on Balcony, Mowgli went down for free. And rather than kind of pull back, Wall said, actually, if we're losing a player, full send it. Drop through Skylight right now, Shinka. Get in the face of that clash. And they just exploded in and around office. And you saw the outcome. They cleaned house with SSG realistically. And this is what I was speaking about before the series that a few have remarked on is, given the current meta we're in, where there's so many strong defenders that can slow the game down so much, what attackers are now doing instead is just going even more aggressive and pushing even faster than they did during the last kind of iteration of the TDM meta. And you've just seen it in full effect in that round. Great for Wolves to get the first attacking round win. And maybe it shows that we have something a bit different to expect for the, from the attackers here on Consulate. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, attacking on console is never an easy thing to do necessarily. We've spoken about this before. The map is made up of lots of small rooms, um, which gives, guess what, defenders lots of corners to hide in. Um, and it means that your droning takes longer. You've got to check all those little corners, all those little hiding places. When you're going through as attackers, you've got to be checking every corner. You've got to be really on it in terms of being ready for those gunfights being brought to you. So there's generally a lot of work for the attackers to do. I like what Wolves did there. They just took it out of play, essentially. Actually, we're just going to go route one. Boof, straight in towards site. We're going to cut out a lot of the map. You can do that on the top floor. They can't do that the same for something like Garage, necessarily. They've got Ashen out there on the roam on the Solace. Very dangerous operator. Very dangerous player. What a combination. Wolves need it, to it. deal with this. A good Solace can be such a headache to deal with. Yep. And because you can't easily like get a throw in there that goes, ha we can see you and you don't know about it. Dealt They've with. really had him contained. And they knew he was up there because of the impact that came through. Hoping to get something throwing himself out the window and finds absolutely nothing. Not a lick of damage. Down onto the other side and that's unfortunate. Forest. I think SSU have just Wrong. suffered from, from over-aggression there. A Ashen's gone out of a window. Forest's gone out of the door. I... Wolves are sat there ready waiting for them. They, you know, it's two of the easiest kills they're going to have all day. So I just feel like SSG, yes, they're going to carry a lot of confidence into this map. We've spoken about the win rate played 4-1-4. They can't let themselves get carried away with that because right now, Wolves are showing up and they're going to punish them if they do. I'm sure they'll only continue to do that the more SSG just keep giving it over to the side. Again, first round, they really have much to do there. And they have loved the aggression in the early rounds. He spoke about it and praised both teams for it because it slows the attacking team down, gives them more to worry about as the round wears on. Here, admittedly, the Leaf managed to pull one back. A trade comes through. Love seeing that. I remarked on a couple of times from SSG, especially on their attacking side, they would miss the opportunity to trade. Walls not forsaking that opportunity here and at least getting one back. 4v2. Headshot kicked off with 5 and 0. I said coming into this map, he was instrumental for the win on Cafe. He was a little bit slow to get started on that map. How was he going to do on this one? And how was it going to impact Wolves' as results? He's come in 5 and 0. He's stayed hot. He's firing on all cylinders. And Wolves are winning rounds on the back of it. P4 manages to pick up hot and cold. It's all up to Fultz. He gets himself a freebie onto Shinka. They've no idea that he's up above. But now that they know, it gives them the opportunity to think about a plant potentially. But where is the diffuser? It's not in hand at the minute. They need to make sure that the timing is right and that they don't push faults one at a time, which is exactly oh. what they are doing. Bit, what is going on? Oh. Like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, it's worked. Dead, dead shot just streaked across the map there, one side to the other and got away with it. But I was a little bit worried then. Yeah, man was playing a risky game. Could have brought it down to a one versus one, but they get over the line and I believe I heard before, right? SSG called in a timeout, did I hear? If they have, yeah, there we go. Two round timeout, Tim. Things are not going to plan, that's for sure. You can see that it's not what they expected. I think yeah. SSG probably came into console very, you know, having they know the stats as well as we do. And they're going to come into it probably very confident. And you can see that Ashen going out of a window, Forrest out of the, you know, all that aggression there. And actually, it's been for nothing. They've yeah. gone and thrown themselves against the rocks and they've been broken by Wolves who have just actually picked them apart, played really well, um, got in and won rounds. Yes, it was a little, there was a little bit of a moment at the end of the round there um, against the Maestro where it was, you know, a little bit worrying. But um, Wolves on the whole have done everything they've needed to do they're looking great 2-0 and it's no surprise to see that attack timeout coming in and Deadshot has not slowed down a second he's 5-0 and zero after two rounds Tim once again I mean admittedly the kind of suicidal run at the end of that last round I wasn't too swarm on but I mean, you're outside going out of this door with a nitro in your hand, you're right? hoping he's tucked away on drones aren't you, it, you, you maybe maybe you'd assume a player would be they'd be back on drones and it's a free c4 that's the risk that you're taking in that situation but you know, doubling down on the investment and trying to get aggressive early on. Uh, you, yeah. Had you not just lost Ashen and you think, yeah, he's, you know, the Solace is feeding me info. There's one out there on draw. Right, yeah, I might go and have a look with the Nitro. But when you've literally just lost Ashen, I don't think that it's, it's a risk you can really be taking. And they've lost the round on the back of it. That Hail um, Mary to try and square 4-4, four, four, but it doesn't come off yet. On once we go then. On towards what looks to be the split site, which is going to be an interesting one. I always enjoy seeing this site being picked out. Yeah, we don't see it too much. We don't often, no. We don't, we not. But the pulse on side, that's the go-to staple for it as well. Play downstairs, see floor upwards. Remember back on old console, all you just see is the entire floor on that first floor site just get completely torn out from below. And everyone would try and play on the downstairs. And there's, there's more options here to cause a bit of trouble. Got to be kind of wary of that, I'd imagine, whether it's trying to play from the west side in as the attackers and the defenders are going to be wary of that. It's a bit of a maze down in the basement. 
or whether or not they try and go top down. They've got a couple of options to play with here, and we'll see how Wolves approach it. Once again, um, certainly no rush. 30 seconds in, going to be opening up those barricades, drones going in. Um, and I like that from them. They've not been the over-aggressors. They've taken their time, um, and they've waited for the opportunities to present themselves. They just needed that electrical to be cleared off. That is going to be done. Um, so that will allow the garage wall to be slowly opened. Ooh, interesting. Aha. No. So I was going to point this out when I saw this yesterday. Well, like with C4s, as you know, they get stuck when they, even if they're outside the kind of like frozen radius, it's almost like more of a square in a way. Yeah. So even when you're outside what looks to be the radius, a single pixel can be anywhere near the frozen effect and it won't work. And then they've just been caught out by that with the Selma, unfortunately. Well, of course, yeah, the Selma would deploy outwards as well and would mm. go into that area. Um, so I imagine that's going to be uh, part of the logic there. So um, Claymores will be placed out to prevent any jump outs. Again, just, you know, uh, heads up play from Wolves. They know that the aggression has been there from SSG. A little bit concerned about the time for them in this round. We're halfway through. They've not really got themselves inside of the map yet. Um, a lot of the breaches have been established, should be dealt with by now. I uh, don't know what's happened with the garage breach, whether um, there was an opportunity maybe to put an electrical back down um, or whether Top that has now been opened located. with the Selmers, but seeing the electrical at the back there is going to tell me that it should now be open. Oh. Mowgli goes in and absolutely slams Forrest there. Yeah, almost loses his life for it in the process. It gets a little bit scrappy. Shinker and P4 try and pull something back, but for all intents and purposes with Mowgli down, that's three players lost on that server side push. Not ideal for the French side. Against SSG, we've got four players. We'll have a 4v3 coming in here. Bibu, he's got to start winning some yeah, gunfights gun at some good. point, Simon. It turns out to be now. Plant going down, 3v3. Morgley just having a tickle of the diffuser there, but he's not going to stick it for the time being. Maybe just waiting for a better position, a better opportunity, maybe another kill or two to come in. But he's just trying to get himself positioned in behind that pillar. But Ashen is up above, hasn't been dealt with yet. And I think that is exactly what Wolves are particularly concerned oh, about. Dear. And they should be as Ashen takes down Morgley and right now Wolves have got no answer to the vertical threat from SSG. Really good from Asher to be playing it the reverse rather than playing downstairs. He's playing upstairs down. Two versus two and 30 seconds to play. They have got it in hand and they could just tuck away here. Just like the this. opportunity with Ashen down for them to not notice is going on. I see one at range, but they'll be able to stick it to him. I like that. Just playing it really tight. Bibu just covering right over the shoulder of the planter. He's going to use noise for his left-hand side so he knows nobody's coming in. He can just watch that one direction. Now then, Deadshot. He's got a great cross over here. Oh. He gets one. He gets two. Deadshot with a plant and a double. And that's going to be all taking round three. Deadshot again. Look at the little smile. Slowed. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He's him. He's him. He's that guy. In the absence of Shiko, someone had to step up to the plate. And my God, is he doing it for the French fans. Three rounds on the attack. No timeout options left, of course, for SSG. They used it after round two. That round was better, I think, in terms of orchestration. Having the Solus above was a, a real headache for Wolves to figure out because they just hail married it down the back stairs, in through box or secret, whatever the hell you want to call it, and got absolutely slaughtered by hot and cold, as you just saw. Ogi went down, he killed two players, and I thought, man, with Ashen now playing above, this round has got to be done and dusted, but Ashen then dies, so they lose the information that he held onto above and managed to pull the round off. Three rounds in a row. This is going to feel like torture for SSG for these next three rounds. It really is because, you know, coming into it, you just feel like if Wolves get a good enough lead here, when you get onto that defence, I've often said this before, say, you know, say Wolves get themselves a 5-1 half again here on the attack, you've always got to feel like on the defence, there's got to be that one site that you can lock down. That's all you need to find at that point. You need two rounds. You can just lock one site down twice, and that's it. Job done. You've won. Um, so SSG, they've got to start finding some rounds. They've got to start finding them now. It already feels like the damage is done, doesn't it? That's the problem. Even if they're coming like a 3-3 three, three half, you'd still be like, man, given how this series has gone so far, we should be doing so much better. So at this point, it's more damage control than it is kind of being able to find a real positive coming out of the half. Let's see how things play up. Dead shot on the Ash in this round at 8 and 0. Ready to really tear SSG a new one once again. He's just waiting for that call on when to go. What I like in a way is like, although Mowgli's been the entry and he's been at the forefront of a lot of these pushes, he's gone down and there's been that reliable second flagger behind him to pick up the pieces and still make stuff work. 
Even Even for a he's in a position, he's zipped temp. in with the Amaru, he's going to be getting the plant down, and SSG are not going to get there in time, the cover is in place, P4 a dead shot, find one apiece, 5 versus 3, Diffuser down, Forest down, everybody down, <laughs> it's all up to hot and cold now, 1 versus 5, and Wolves, they are on the hunt, Des, and they are ripping SSG to pieces. Fresh and Jackers, eat your heart out. That is a go-to classic ranked execute through it that really office window. It really is. I'm <laughs> usually the Amaru. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the one in there full sending it whilst you're getting cover. I'm not going to name names, but P4 had better cover than, you know, he, he was on the cover. <laughs> come on, Bibu come on. was well looked after. Who are we dobbing him? Who are we dobbing I, him? I can't do it. I is can't it Jackers? Do it. Fresh is always very good on the cover. That's what I will say. All right, so we've eliminated one from the set there, or it could be. <laughs> the Jackers, I'm imagining, is normally Fresh pretty... is always excellent right, yeah. on the cover for me. <laughs> Fresh has just walked in, exasperated that we're daring to kind of say that. To be fair, you've given him a nice compliment there. You should love that. Absolutely. Yeah, he did He did gesture, what the hell was that? And I'm like, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> SSG being caught a bit asleep at the wheel. Admittedly, very oppressive at what they brought along. You know, you had the Grim on side. We expected to see a lot of Grim in this competition with the Decay the on side as well. It's, it's a lot to keep the, the defenders at bay when you're going in for an execute like that. And it's so hard to deny. And in a world where, again, defense is so strong, these quick and easy direct to sight from the external side of the map attacks are so effective. As we saw, Bar and Cocktail are back on Cafe. You're seeing it here with that last sight and Wolves. Wow, what a turn this would be if they turn around and take five or six rounds in this first half. The thing is, with that plant, it, it can be a tough one to hold off for the defenders. You've got to have the right utility in place. You know, you're covering past that half wall from the window. And it's so difficult to swing into it. Once the diffuser starts going down, you've really got to deal with it from below. Um, you know, you've got to have somebody in position, whether that be your Solis, whether that be somebody on an Nitro. You know, you've got to have something there to deal with it from below. So long as the desk has been cleared out, um, which can be done in a number of ways, if that position has been moved out, then bibu has got all the space in the world he needs to get in there, and Wolves have just shown that. But Passion, he's going to open things up with a quick kill onto Shinka, and it's starting to fall apart a little bit for Wolves on this one. As J9O gets a but double, dead but it's still dead here. shot. He's there once oh. again. He's 11 and 0 at the minute. Oh, it's three versus one now as Fultz finally shuts him down. And it's all up to P4. Could have got himself a third onto the mirror and the dropper, and then swung and got the fourth guy. It could have been a 4K to convert the round over. Now, I wouldn't write things off with P4, by the way. Although he hasn't been like he has 17 kills on the last map, he still had 12. He's still been quietly going about his business here. He has been Mr. Reliable in the midfield for this team. So although a 3K is going to be a hard and tall order, it's plenty doable for P4. It's going to be a waiting game now for SSG. P4 just gets himself up into the top floor. Going to try and use those verticals, see if he can uh, find anybody from above. But at this point, he just needs a kill. He just needs one kill to get things going. Drops into sight. He knows that there's going to be angles looking through into there. Might be an opportunity to get the diffuser down, but with hot and cold underneath, FNATs to walk into. There's very little that P4 can realistically do here. As soon as he starts putting that diffuser down, it's not even about hot and cold denying the plant. It's about them knowing exactly where he is. It's and they're playing location. all three floors as well, Tim. Exactly. It's, like, this oh. is a nightmare for P4. He's working through barbed wire, so they're likely going to hear that. They're going to know that he's moving his way. He's got plenty of time. That is the one thing in his favour. But honestly, I think the first gunfight he comes across is probably going to be the end of this. Will he check this corner by the looks of it? No, he's looking completely the wrong way. It's all too easy for Forrest to get the close onto P4. SSG finally get a small reprieve here. A single round on Consulate to their name on the defensive side. Four to Wolves as we go into round six. I did say it'd be like damage control, Tim. The best they can walk away with here is two rounds on the defensive half. In all honesty, if SSG can walk away with two, I think it's a bit of a steal. Yeah. But the way that they've played so far and the way that Wolves have played, if they come away 4-2, I'm going to be looking at that thinking, hmm, Wolves maybe should have had a bit more out of that. It's still not a bad first half for Wolves, don't oh, get me man. wrong. But, you know, you look at it Tell and you think, what? they should have at least five. That shot was 11-0 and zero before he finally yeah. got taken down. And again, he could have easily got those next two, well, not easily, but could have got those next two kills if he caught the mirror on the drop and then spun round and got the next. In fact, if he killed the mirror, there was no C4 coming skyward. He probably does go on to really control the site from above in that round. So a small margin of timing, a little bit of an ammo issue as well. But it does give SSG a round they sorely, sorely need.
Yeah, they had to get something going. They had to get something going. Let's not forget, SSG have already used their tactical timeout as well. They used it before the start of round three. It was between round two and three that they used it very early in the game. And it leaves them in a position that no matter what happens now, they've just got to keep on rolling and try and keep themselves in this. Um, Ashen straight out of the window. Still bringing that aggression. He's just going to pre-fire an area there. He doesn't necessarily know anybody's there. He doesn't necessarily expect anybody there. But the players will practice that. They know exactly where the angle is. They know exactly where the spawn is going to come from. So they'll just run and go for that fire and see if they get anything. Nothing doing for Ashen. I mentioned it back on Cathy when we saw this brought along. The Asa this time round in Bibu's hands rather than Shinka. Here is to see where the execute comes in again. You can follow the Osser and really get a good idea as to what's going down. And given he's hanging around secret here, it's probably going to be that execute once again down through the basement. The only thing I'm always nervous about is what we saw last time around was Ashen being on the Solus. He had a lot of control up on the ground floor. So if they apply some pressure there, good. It means they can at least control him away at least somewhat. I don't think he'll make the same mistake twice where he'll find himself getting brought down for essentially nothing. And he's already found Mowgli. I tell you what, he's in Mowgli's head rent free this season. Yeah, it certainly looks Ibu. that way. Bibu's going to take a ton of damage. He's going to take a little bit more as well, and it's going to be enough to put him down on the deck. That's going to be the finish. But Boris, he keeps on fighting. He knows that there's a second coming along as well. And there is a nice. big round from SSG as they go flawless. And what a way to finish the half. Not only two rounds back to back, a flawless thrown in there as well. Mm. And could we see the tide starting to turn? Bit of a flourish, I think, for SSG. Again, we said those two rounds feel like a steal. Walls really slowing things down in that last round. And I think as soon as SSG realized, okay, we've got an Osser pushing in through server, they must be attacking this direction. You had the immediate pushing towards box on the top side coming in. I imagine a jump out from the window in towards box to cut off their back line. You also did have one player on walls, admittedly, try and push their way in towards Visa to challenge onto Ashen, but unfortunately didn't win that gunfight either. Just everything that could have gone wrong that round for, uh, for Wolves did, and everything that could go right for SSG absolutely did, and a lot of that was down to their decision-making. So really good stuff from the American side. Now that they've got to pour some magic with their own on the attacking half, they are down four and two. Across the series so far, has been very heavily defender-favoured. Uh, defender got to do some magic on the attack. The thing is, for SSG now, the positive they've got to see, by getting those two rounds, I commented previously, if Wolves get to five, they've only got to be able to lock down one defensive side. Now, SSG have put them in a position where they have to show that they can find wins on two defensive sides. Otherwise, it will end up in overtime. So, it just adds that little bit of pressure. Yes, they've got the favourite side. They come in here onto the primary. Maybe they get the win. And they're thinking, right, this is looking good. Deadshot's going to take some serious damage. He's out again, though. Oh and he manages to get it. Ashen taken down with a double attempt from Deadshot. The thing is... SSG are the team that love playing like this. We've seen it on club. We saw it on cafe. Window jump outs, run outs of kitchen door, you name it. They were going for everything they possibly could. Yet not only has Deadshot tried it once and kind of messed it up, he's gone in back in for seconds. He's gone in for afters, Tim. He's gone in for afters, Got Des. away with the kill. Like, SSG should not be letting that happen. Now he got himself something tasty on that second attempt of just look like SSG were not ready for it. I think, you know, the, the, to be fair, on anybody's part, you'd have the assumption, I've hit him on the run out, he's not coming back for more. He knows that we know that he's there, you know, but you no, know, Deadshot just playing the double bluff and getting back out there, and what a start it is. I'm going to continue taking down Utility as well. Fultz does manage to find P4, though, and Deadshot, he's coming under pressure here. Fultz just raining bullets through the soft wall around him. Does take damage from above, though. This one is becoming <laughs> tense. Mowgli with a little sidestep and dead shot. Ah, being kind of shot. I know where I really didn't have the expectation, but when he falls, Mowgli is there to pick up the pieces. Two kills in the round and two left standing for SSG. It's all down to Jane I know and Forrest. It's been a very vertically focused round as well. All the kills from Mowgli seeming to come in from above. He's found three for himself as well. Wants to remind us the dead shot ain't him. It's all about Mowgli. Just again, going to be looking for this final one. I'm sure he's uh, certainly feeling himself in this round. Forrest will send up the air job. Just trying to get anything going that he can from beneath, but in a one versus three, he knows that it's a big ask. Mowgli okay. steps down and says, that's my four for the round. Thank you very much. And I'm going to just start putting a little bit of pressure on SSG as well. That's round five on the board then um, for Wolves. At least it's now 5-2. And... The big question for me is this next round. This is where it becomes important. If you remember at the beginning of that round, I said Wolves need to show us that they can win on two sites here if they want to get this done. Um, 
and that's where this next round is going to be so important. If Wolves can take them somewhere else, um, they're probably going to be down into the basement to garage, I would imagine. If they can take them there and get the win, you're then looking at this situation where they need one more round and they've got two sites to pick from. They've got console, they've got garage where they can find that. So it's going to be a big one for them now. I felt like almost every single fight in that round, as I mentioned, was through the verticals, whether it was shooting upwards or shooting downwards. It was just a bit of carnage. Ogley walks away king of the round, though. Five and two. Once we go, she say, Tim. The thing is, when you see walls playing like this, when they're two entries are the ones that are really shining. And Mowgli is always normally the primary entry, the one who's getting into the gunfights first. But between him and Deadshot, when they're having a day like they are today, this team is so hard to deal with. And I know that this sounds funny because he's zero and four, but Shinker has been one of their best players, if not the best player consistently across the whole of the last year. You get through those two front lines, you've got P4 who's been quite a consistent player in the mid line. Bibu, a bit of a stinky day today so far. We'll let him off, it's the first day. But Shinker again in the back line can be such a stable player. When they're firing on all cylinders, Wolves look absolutely phenomenal, but their challenge has always been consistency throughout a competition. And I hope that this at least signals a change. The day one can carry into day two, day three, day four, day five, and they keep on playing at the level of quality we've seen, at least on consulate so far and elements of the previous maps as well. Yeah, they've really picked up the pace as they've gone on. Uh, yeah. You know, they've really it's grown into... It's first game kind of shaking off a little bit. It's you a bit know, of at the end of the day, it's going to be the same for oh, everybody shoot. coming out. Nice nice try. Try. Out the window is not going to do the job um, on that one, but Deadshot is going to continue holding that angle for the time being, just waiting for any change in pixel colour. He knows he's still out on the rappel. He's got the information. He's feeding it back in, but Ashen has managed to just sneak his way in pretty close to the defensive line here. So... To be aware, they need to be alert. They don't want to get caught out. Hot and cold is going to take some damage getting in through that window. All about the vertical play. And a lot of buck throughout this series. Sometimes joined up by the Ram, of course, as well. But here is just the buck getting to work. With a little bit of help coming what? in from the Jackal. But even with the Jackal on side, it's never going to be enough. Just a little trick. Deadshot finding Ashen, who himself has just been bullied, it feels, by Deadshot after dominating Mowgli in previous engagements. Yep, Deadshot finding the entry kill onto Ashen two rounds in a row there. He's looking for more. He knows somebody's oh, there. How? Peter around the corner how? and rips the head off Fultz. Five versus three now. Wolves looking comfortable, but Hot and Cold has something to say about that. Manages to take down Deadshot from above. Three versus four. Right, tag team, it's Mowgli's time to shine. But that second kill for me is just nigh on unforgivable. You knew that Deadshot was there. You knew what he's capable of. And you're giving him this very easy 1v1. Yes, there's some pressure coming in from above, but clearly not enough pressure because it still took another five seconds for him to actually die afterwards. Hot and cold, almost going down, but it's Jane I know to get P4 first. 3v3. Yeah, P4 was just hiding away there, waiting for that vertical play, I think, potentially. Should they get in a position to put the diffuser down or maybe the sneak down yellow? He was just giving himself options, keeping himself in that position to work into piano. Or even if uh, SSG established themselves in piano, he could have hit them on the flank. But they've done a very good job. They've found him, they've turned it around, they've used that intel, it leaves them now three versus three, but time could become a factor in 35 seconds, only Missed. starting to open up the breach now, manages to take off the exothermic as well God, there's got none left as well, that's the wall staying closed this is all walls needed, it really came down to those impacts, and they have done the job needed, 20 seconds to go and Forrest and Jane I know have got to force their way in, and win some incredible gunfights, Tim, to get it over the line Wolves just need to not peek at this point let the clock do its job um, force them into engagements, force yeah, them to come through doorways, force them into bad positions, Mowgli, he manages to find Jane I know, and Forrest, a big double, as you said, as Deadshot went down, it's now Mowgli's time to step up, and what a duo they are playing as at the minute. Real raid boss energy between those two. You kill one, there's a second one there ready to leap on you straight away. So difficult to deal with. And interestingly, the, the main difference in the change has just been that they've put Deadshot in as the main entry engagement and pulled Mowgli back a little bit and had him play sort of second fiddle. On the attacking side, it's more the reverse when you see Mowgli being the one leading the charge in and sometimes a bit too far ahead of his team. But when Deadshot's playing like this, it's completely understandable that you want him to be the one taking all of these entry engagements. This now needs to be SSG's big opportunity. Four rounds, mate. It's 6-2. They need four rounds in a row, but they are going to the third choice site for Wolves. So SSG have to get in here. Yes, they have to win every round from here on out. But more importantly, the reason this one, it's their opportunity. It's the third choice. They've got to see it like that. You know, this is not... Um, a primary site. This is one where we should be able to get the win and it can start shifting that momentum. It can start the ball rolling. 
But boy, are they against remaining. an absolute mountain here that they've got to climb. Five seconds a bit too remaining. big a one, I'm afraid. Again, if, if it was flipped and it was Wolves on the attack and SSG on defence, I'd feel quite optimistic for them, actually, that they could take it towards overtime. But given how the sides are... Oh, please. I tell you what, if he got away with that, that would have been filth. Attackers have dropped the bomb to I mean, me. okay, dead shot to straight trade with help and gold. Is it the end of the world losing a castle? No nope. more bother that you're losing dead shot, to be honest. And on the other side, you lose the Brava, those drones are offline, no hacking, for example. The electricals are safe, you're going to see the mute jammers being safe, any bulletproofs that are down, of which there are none, so never mind. It's definitely a win I'd for feel, Wolves. I'd feel, I'd feel happy about that. That trade is definitely a win for Wolves. It is in um, terms of operators and utility, yeah, but in terms of players... Yeah, not necessarily in terms of players. Deadshot's going crazy at the minute. Yeah. But in terms of operators, in terms of utility, it's it's definitely um, you know a win for Wolves. You've got those additional yeah. drones that have lost. You've got the hacking ability, which has been lost. They're now be confident yeah, uh, you know, know, that the mute jammers aren't going to be lost, that the key claws aren't going to be taken over and destroyed. Um, it just gives them that little bit of, uh, that little bit of freedom to... To think about the utility a little bit differently. So, Jay Nano is going to be working across the first floor for the time being. Looking to get himself in towards the bottom of Spiral. Uh, Wolves aren't really too heavily positioned up here. They're all looking to defend that bottom site. They're on servers at the minute. Forrest is going to put some smoke out there and dip away. Bibu's there for the traders. Jay Nano takes down Mowgli. Three versus three. And this has been an intense first half to the round. Time for the back line to shine, I think, for Wolves. Bibu Shinker and P4, got to get some magic going. Did a better map from Bibu overall compared to the previous two, where especially the last one, he was very invisible. I think one and ten he ended on or something crazy. It wasn't the strongest performance. But at least here with him and P4 putting up some numbers, that feeling they can get this over the line. However, you cannot ignore that Forrest has such a strong ability here to isolate a player with that shield and just run at them, put them down into the ground, and job be done. So Wolves have got to play real tight together here. It's all about that team play to close out this round. Yeah, I think um, the Blitz is the important factor. That's where they're going to have to find the value because otherwise you've kind of sacrificed the gun to bring along Blitz. He's only got the pits pistol and it just leaves you sort of at two and a half versus three, really. So they've got to find some value out of that shield. They've got to find some value out of that ability to bully these defenders. Out comes the impact nade. It is going oh, to him. be enough as Bibu somehow survives that second right in his face. He is downed. Ashen is going to finish it off. But two versus one effectively now as Fultz has taken down and Wolves have every opportunity but Finker is able to boost his man back onto his go. feet with no Solus on side as well there's no easy information but they've got the yellow pings to the infos on side for them if they need it they've just got to try and find their man moves back over another one on side Seeper off the top and Fultz is gone and it's a down onto the Finker that's all she wrote Wolves with a massive pullback after a terrible start to Clubhouse to take the win over SSG what a turnaround from the French side. Absolutely dominating on Consulate there. And I've got to say, Des, as the day has gone on, they have impressed me more and more. I said it at the beginning of the day. This is a top team. We know that. We've seen them in EUL. We know how good they can be. We know how they can get on top of teams and punish them. And they've finally shown it as their map one was a little bit shaky, but after that, they found their way back into things and looked fantastic. I would not be wanting to play Wolves over the next couple of days, having seen the back end of that game. The big question that will hang over their heads to me is do we see Deadshot keep on that form? He went, what, 17 and eight on the previous map, 15 and five just now. That is a, a dare I say, a life series from Deadshot. We haven't seen him put those kind of massive numbers consistently. Ever. So there's always that question mark of, can he do it again tomorrow? Can he do it again the next day? But if they do keep on playing like this, I'm with you, Tim. They'll be a very exciting team to watch. Yeah, I think they've been great. Really enjoyed watching that. Both teams, to be fair. Shout out to SSG as well. Um, it's just been a very entertaining matchup to watch. It has. I mean, what, we, no surprise that we've had an overtime and three maps in our first match of uh, SI. That's pretty much par for the course. But um, I've just, the time has flown by because it's been thoroughly enjoyable to watch. Here's some of the highlights playing out for you from that map. Of course, lots you can look back on across that series. There'll be no short of highlight reels, I imagine, from this series overall. There's so many good moments. A, a good spattering of flawless rounds yeah. from either side yeah, in there yeah. as well, just showing that kind of sway of the battle where sides were dominant at different points throughout the series. It wasn't a one-sided stomp, that is for sure. 
except for maybe the last map. The thing is, I think there's, I think there's plenty as well. Um, the reason I'm excited about both teams on the back of that is they've both had the moments, they've both had mistakes, they've both had areas where they can improve. So I look at it and I think if I can come away excited about Wolves there off the back of Cafe and Consulate, there's also areas that they can improve on. So this is a team that can actually get better as they go as well. You know, there is there's room for growth here for both of them. And that's what I think makes them both very exciting teams in terms of the competition as a whole. To me, for, uh, the thing I spoke about in the second map was what you see between the two teams is for Wolves, great like peaks, very low troughs. For SSG, it was kind of more of a very gentle kind of wave throughout the whole game. We didn't really see too many sharp moments from any one single player. They didn't have the hero who could step up when required, like we saw on the other side. And these are the stats from that final map. Chokara once again, dead shot, hopping at the charts on for his team. Mowgli not too far behind, admittedly. On the other side, no one really breaking six kills, unfortunately, Tim. It's, honestly, I did. We'd said coming into it, we'd looked at the stats of Consular, and it it really did support SSG doing well. Played for a one four. Wolves had never won a tier one game on there, and we were just kind of like, yeah, surely SSG are going to come out with something here. They're going to be confident, and you know, we were maybe a little bit surprised that it had slipped through as the decider map, but mm. they've just not turned up. There is the reality. Wolves have completely stifled them. And this is the whole match summary. A nice little graphic we got for you here, showing what happened across the entirety of that series. 39 and 22 for dead shots. Certainly cannot be ignored. Mowgli still putting up good numbers despite a pretty disappointing start to Clubhouse at 31 and 23. But overall for me, I look at like entry, for example. Entry battles in that game. Overall, SSG had a massive advantage in the first two maps. In that second one, I'm uh, sorry, in the last map, sorry, I'm pretty sure we only saw them get a couple of entries. Everything else was all up walls. Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, Deadshot had a number of opening kills onto Ashen. And like you say, Mowgli, I think, got involved on the entry as well. And Wolves just really dominated. Um, I don't know if there's maybe a mental element to it that it just started to feel like it had slipped away from SSG. And they just really lost the pace that we'd seen them have earlier in the game. Well, Tim, that's our first series of the day done. And there's still three more to come here on the B stream. There's also action so on the A stream. Stuff. There is Siege every day this week. There is so much to enjoy. So we'll throw it to a break. But before we do that, we'll leave you with the Intel play of the game. So feast your eyes on this one. And we'll catch you guys in a little bit.